My guest today is one of the winningest DFS players of all time with millions upon millions of winnings in DFS across more than a decade now of playing across several different sports. Uh, one of the best DFS players of all time. Really happy to have him. We're also co-host of the Lowell's podcast, which of course I reference all the time, watch every week. It's like my program that I tell my wife at uh, 1230 on Thursday, so I need to get going. I got to go watch my show. That's my show. The, the one like thing that I catch live every week is the Lowell's podcast. So very happy to have Brian here. Of course, already had Pete on from the Lowell's podcast. So so number two from the Lowell's podcast, but also my first uh, repeat guest of this style of podcast. Brian was one of the first guests that I had on my high stakes podcast. So really happy to have him here once again. Brian, uh, you can find him on Twitter uh, at Brian Hooper underscore underscore. He is Brick75 on all of the platforms where you play. Brian, how are you doing tonight? Uh, pretty good. I just looked at my lineup, so not not great after looking. But, um, yeah, can't complain. We just got news that Anthony Simons is available. So. Oh, that's not that's not good. <laughs> oh, that's not good? <laughs> no, I wanted him out. All right. Well, bummer. Oh, well. Um, Brian, at some point during the show, Brian is going to have to adjust all of his do, – do all of his late stops because we have three – NBA games coming up at nine o'clock real America time, which I think is actually a, a phrase, a, a term that I got from you, Brian, real America time, calling it in the Midwest. I'm not sure if I got that from you, but it, it's one of those things that I think you say, and I've heard it enough that I just started saying yeah. it also. Uh, and, and I like it. I'm sticking with it. Real yeah. America time. Um, so in, you know, within the next hour, Brian's going to have to step aside, run his process. You guys going to have to entertain me for a little while. Um, but for now we can, we can talk to Brian until, we get all the news and he can make those swaps. Uh, Brian, a lot of a lot of stuff that I usually talk about with guests, you and I kind of have already covered. So we'll kind of do it quickly, like a lot of the, the process stuff, the more in-depth um, topics. But I think uh, when you and I, when, when you were on high stakes, I don't think I had started asking people yet uh, their favorite sports team and or athlete and where they are from, where they live now. Of course, I, I correlate those things in my head. I know uh, it's not always correlated, but where are you from? Where do you live now? And do you have any favorite sports teams or athletes? I know you are a laundry bro. <laughs> uh, I'm from Illinois. More specifically, I grew up in a suburb of Chicago called Lamont. Um, and uh, I, I actually uh, was living in Chicago for, I don't even know how long, 15 years or something. And uh, sold that place recently, and now just stay up this this place, which is up uh, northern Illinois on a lake. Oh, is this like a cabin? No, it's a house, but it's on a oh, lake. house on a lake. Okay, yeah. cool. And uh, and do you have any favorite sports teams or athletes? I I grew up a huge Oakland Athletics fan. The Bash Brothers, loved yeah, them. of course, yeah. So, um, uh, you know, I I'm I just really. I really don't care anymore, for, you know, about any team, but like I will occasionally check in on the A's minor league system and um, in the Bears. That's basically, basically it. I mean, the reason, probably one of the reasons I'm in into this is because of the Oakland A's, because Billy, Billy Bean and Money. I suppose. Ball. That that yeah. does not surprise me that you would be a fan of Billy Bean and Moneyball, like the the analytical approach to baseball. Yeah, yeah, I, I probably wouldn't even went to college or finished if it wasn't for that because I, I majored in sports management. So, um, like, I just wanted to work for a front office. That's right. I, I remember you saying that uh, on the last show that you majored in sports management. It's so funny to me that you got into this through sports rather than through the math side of it because I think of you as being such a data <laughs> guy, like you have your tools and stuff, but it was actually the sports that brought you in, and now you've lost most of your fandom. Um, but still, I guess a little bit residual. That's good to know that you do still have a little bit of that fandom that brought you in originally. Uh, but that is that is very funny. Um, that, that was my angle to get in the front office, though, too, because I stopped playing baseball when I was like, you know, 15 or something. Right. Sure. So, like, I knew I wasn't going to, you know, they usually they hire like X minor leaguers and st often and stuff, especially back then. Not so much anymore. Yeah. But um and really, uh, you know, I found out later on, it's a lot of nepotism and not just nepotism, but like, um, you know, knowing somebody who knows somebody, you know, like, you know, like the, you know, like uh, Paxson, the Bills, GM, X-Bowls play like his kid yeah, yeah, yeah. works Jackson. for the White Sox. 
you know, and like, oh, really? and I know this because I know someone who works for the White Sox who's also parents where, you know, uh, had some influence, you know, and like all these jobs are for influential people. And you don't know that when you're going to college, you're like, no, you right. just get a degree and you work your way up. And, yeah. you know, like, like a naive fool is exactly what I did. But then I thought by reading like Bill, all the Bill James almanacs and, and making my own like projections for minor leaguers and stuff like that, and that I could. I could excel at that and maybe kind of weasel my way into a front office job with all these, you know, ex jocks. Um, There's got to be some positions that are not taken by the the Paxons of the world, right? Otherwise, you you can't succeed, right? Because it would just be run by incompetence, right? Because they're not yeah. not based on merit. Yeah. So yeah, that uh, like a lot of those, but you need, but a lot of times to like. To, to, to get up there, you got to get your foot in the door. And a lot of those jobs are really hard to get. True. Right. They're not just going to get, let you be like an analytics guy in the front office, unless you went to like Harvard or something, you know? Yeah. And um, so, so yeah, that, that, that was playing. And I worked at in minor league baseball for, I don't know, not, I mean, not that long, but like, I don't know, four years or something, three, three, four years. And it was a shit show. Uh, when was this about when you worked in minor league baseball? Or the early 2000s. Okay. And we're like with the, which organization with the, like the White Sox or? No, my, no, they were um, like the minor league teams, not affiliated. So like the Joliet. Oh, non affiliated. Okay. Yeah. yeah like the, the St. Paul Saints used to be one of those teams. Exactly. Yeah. So the, 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 I, the, the team in Joliet, Illinois, that was in the same league with the St. Paul Saints. Oh, funny. Um, Back That's then, cool. but that league folded. So, um, yeah, I'm pretty sure they were in the same league. That was so so long ago. It's Probably. hard to remember everything. But yeah, but I I actually preferred that um, because they picked their own players. And if you worked for like you know whatever the Pawtucket Red Sox, right? The Red Sox pick. Uh, yeah, yeah, I don't know if they're and still it's a funnel system. I think they are. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, they, they're all their players are controlled by the ownership at the main team's headquarters, so you can't get any experience of what I wanted, which is player development to right. pick, pick your own players. So I was happy to work to work in there, but yeah, it was. It was, and also back that was like back. I don't know if they still do this though, but like where interns are just totally taken advantage of. You know what I mean? Like right. you were, were you unpaid at that time? Yeah, they didn't even pay. Yeah. They didn't pay me, and, and you know worked. You know, you work all the time. I remember like this, 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 this one time, like they're like, uh, put out, put out all the uh, giveaways, right? For like the, the day, you know, the, the people come in, they get like some stupid giveaway. Mm -hmm. and it was like 3,000 items. I had to like sit there all day taking God. out item after item. And all the other employees just walking past me, like never offering help, not doing anything, you know, just, just... exactly what you signed up for as an yeah, it's uh, like League baseball. It's like, you know, this is, this is, I, I don't think this is gonna, and it didn't get much better after that, after getting a job and getting paid and stuff. And, um, and like my boss was an ex at the next job was an ex player played for the, he had a cup of coffee with the Indians and, um, he was, I'm, I'm pretty sure he was illiterate. Like, I'm not <laughs> sure he could read and write. But, uh, would you say your next job, like you, uh, you got another job in the minor league system? Yeah. Okay. Got a paid one after the internship um, with a team uh, that then changed their name um, closer to Chicago. They were called the Cook County Cheetahs, and then they eventually changed their name to the Windy City Thunderbolts. And I think that's the same team name. Okay. Um, that they have it's basically the South Side, so just outside the city city boundaries. Um, and yeah, the. It wasn't, it was, uh, it was, it wasn't fun. And then um, like, you know, you'd meet some more people in, in the industry. Right. And then be like, Oh, like there's very little chance of like actually get becoming, you know, working in the player personnel department, especially back then. Huh. So like, you know, and like, I'm like, I don't want to do sales. And like I interviewed with the, Oh God, I can't remember. It was somebody in Florida, a prof the professional team in Florida. It might have been, it might have been um one of the hockey teams at um the Panthers. San Jose Sharks? No, Florida, not, not California. Oh, right, right. 
<laughs> other side of the country. I don't, I don't even know uh, hockey teams, nor do I know cities in Florida. So I was I was thinking San Jose was in Florida. Um, okay, yeah. <laughs> no. what, what are, what are, no, about as far as possible yeah, right. <laughs> in the contiguous United, United States. But yeah, um, but like uh, I, I just remember, I, like I was on the call and it was a, a sales gig, and the guy wanted to do a role playing sale oh god. and i'm like oh my god like i just don't want it. have you ever done that like where you're like in no. the middle of an interview of a job not just the sales thing but you're just like i really don't want to do this for my career <laughs> and it shows yeah i'm sure i'm sure that has happened to me in interviews i i have never been asked to do role playing in an interview oh. for a job that sounds miserable that's like what you do like practicing for a job interview or at least that's what you do in movies if you're practicing for a job interview I never really got into the the role playing. Like, okay, you be the the manager, I'll be the. That sounds miserable. Right. It's like, did you want me to like train in method acting and improvising? You know, improvising. Like, right. I, I don't know. Um, yeah. So that was that phone call was the end of my uh, my sports career. So you about so you were in for over four years you, you say four years at the first place or four years total uh in the minor league baseball system. it was probably like yeah three or four years total okay so it was not all that long i, I actually since, since we're already talking about it going way back uh to to your beginnings your, your early employment i, I kind of want to follow the history from there through your uh your, your employment history leading up to like you know because i know you were in government for a while i know you're a professional poker player for a while like you have a pretty interesting long long history uh in this stuff uh we should say hello to everybody who is joining us um ian of course is uh my friend saying good things about my show um also good to see you tyler um i i really love my favorite comment here is uh from michelle saying that we are a couple of her favorite bearded guys in the biz and of course um ian asking once again are we related uh what, what did you think of the thumbnail brian I liked it. It was good. Yeah. Yeah. Could you tell that it was babies that I put our faces on? <laughs> There's a picture of baby twins, twin boys. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Good. I thought like I made our faces too big. So you couldn't really, you wouldn't necessarily notice that. But yeah, I thought it was, I thought it was pretty good. I like the thumbnail except yeah. for, uh, it was clear that like I had taken a picture of myself with my phone camera, whereas yours was like on a webcam. So like the picture of my, my face was much clearer than yours. So it wasn't, wasn't the same quality in that sense. The only, Did you the only make downside. yourself? Oh yeah, I make all my I make all my thumbnails. Wow, thumbnails fancy! Myself. Yeah, I'm like a professional thumbnail. Basically, guy yeah. not a big deal. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, all right, so we, we still have 40 minutes before the slate, so I'll, we'll we'll continue to check in. Um, I, I assume yeah. you're going to want to do it like within like I'll do it like 10 minutes, minutes before nine. 10 minutes before. Okay, that yeah. sounds good. Um, yeah, thank you for stopping in, Obi Wan. All right, so you three or four years in minor league baseball uh, in like the early 2000s. What happens? after that like what was it was it poker next was oh. it uh what happens next no i just dumb young young dumb young guy doing dumb young guy stuff after that interview like i probably quit my job a couple weeks later with no intention of doing anything else i've done the same thing several times quitting with no backup plan yeah um, yeah no, and like no source of income while you know i've rent rent due yeah, I, right. like, I just signed a year lease like um and like in within and then i started doing interviews um in like adjacent uh uh industries like facilities you know management you know like that okay. that's right because like stadium has a lot of the same facility things you know uh um but like even during those interviews i was like this is i don't want to do this um you know so it, i'm sure that sh it showed during that and I just like probably stopped applying for jobs altogether um, and just, you know, had like a little bit of money saved up from the last job that I was paying, paying my rent and, and playing poker. So like I've, I've, I've always gambled since, I don't know, 14 probably with oh, my wow. buddies in high school playing poker and um, the, the, um, I don't even know if they call them this anymore. The Indian casinos, but you know, whatever, uh, that's what they're <laughs> called. We so, yeah. Right. yeah um, let you in when you're 18. So I started uh, getting obsessed with counting cards of blackjack around 17 uh, in preparation of counting cards when I turned 18. And I, and I, and I did that. Um, wow. So like my, my mom would get me like a bunch of used decks of cards. So you can like estimate how many, 
how many decks are left in this in the uh, tray for the dealer, you know, and and you could practice your counting just sitting at your lap over and over again, you know, with you know just throwing down two cards at a time, et cetera, and just doing that every day all the time until I until I felt accurate enough. And then when I turned eighteen, then I we did drive up there, my buddies, you know, we we wanted to go anyway, so. Went and counted cards, and I won like three grand or something, you know, over a, a bunch of trips. Did you get caught? Like that—that's not allowed, right? In the, in the casinos, counting cards is. Yeah, they'll kick, they'll kick you out. There was yeah. there was one guy. So like I did it uh, up until like uh, until I turned twenty one and got into the uh, the you know I, I don't know what you want to call it the regular casinos around here. And they had poker tables. And I was okay. like, oh, I didn't know that. And it was all limit poker back then. There was no no, no limit, which is crazy huh. to think about. But, yeah, um, yeah pretty much, it'd be tough tough to find, probably tough to find a limit, no limit hold'em game in in, uh, in Vegas even at that time. Mainly everything was limit. Um, but either way, I was like, oh, this looks way more fun than than counting cards but i do remember what you know once or twice uh one of the pit bosses just eyeing me up i don't think i was gambling enough that they cared right um i did years later on a on a uh, a cruise with with my family um they had a single deck which is unheard of right because usually it's like seven eight decks which is much harder to yeah to to, to profit off of on the cruise, and I paid for my whole cruise like in one night, <laughs> just gambling with my brother. But then I'm not they, expecting you to count cards on the cruise. They're like, nobody is coming on the cruise. For no, the he, they did because that they st they started shuffling after every hand. Oh, okay, which then then you can't get that. So then I went to the poker table. Yeah, stacked some donkey, and paid <laughs> 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 and paid for my trip. But um, yeah. So th so then I saw the the poker tables, and I started playing limit poker like every day um now that was that was you know that was before i graduated you know fully graduated and started working in in baseball and stuff so once i went back to um so i had been playing poker the whole time but yeah yeah i needed some cash so i started playing online poker a lot more after i quit my job and what really changed it completely for me was um was i don't know who, if you're familiar with, who, with taylor kb oh yeah he owns he's, uh, uh, he's an etr guy right yeah he's like part part owner or founder yep he he was a poker player who started a poker instruction site called card runners and um he would do his screen name was green plastic and he would do some like short videos and i saw a free one who knows? I don't even know if YouTube was around then, but some somewhere there was a free, free video. And every time he would lose a hand, he would he would cap it up. So you have to like click this button to. So like let's say you have a thousand dollars on the table and you lose fifty bucks, he would click it, and it would refresh his his um his up to the to the table max hundred big blinds. But you see his balance, and his balance was like forty five thousand dollars, and I was like this fucking guy has 45 grand on one poker site, you know, back then. And I was like, I don't know. I was, I was blown away because I wouldn't have had the stones to like, leave that much on a site. You know what yeah, I mean? Me neither. And you um, shouldn't have in retrospect. Well, no, it turned out pretty fine for him. Well, sure. Um, but that, is where I was like, well, if this fucking guy can do it, uh, why can't I do it? And um, so, so like I started um, uh, really, you know, practicing more looking because I read all the limit holding books and all the old theory of, you know, where, where blenders, you know, stole the, the theory yeah, yeah. DFS from the theory of poker books, the Sklansky uh, mammoth books <clears throat> and the two plus two forms were huge back then. And uh, just going on all those and um, and in the card runners videos too, I signed up for their site was 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 eye opening too, on on how to play, especially no limit. 
Um, well, was it just Taylor or were there more people at the site? It was him and Andrew Wiggins, who's also works yeah, at yeah. ETR. Okay. Yeah, and then they started hiring more people. You know, I think he clearly wanted to be an entrepreneur. It seems, you know, it seemed like. Yeah. Um, so um, the games were so juicy back then. It was ridiculous. And they have a thing I talk about on our show all the time, break back, which is yeah. they give you a percentage of your, is doing. of your fees back. The underdog is yeah. doing. And so if you could break even, I was like, damn, if I could break even. I could get like five grand a month and rake back. Like I'm not going to get that in a job. You know what I mean? Like, especially back then. And so, um, and so like that just, and I think this happens for all successful gamblers. They get, I, I probably ran hot. I pro probably, I just played cash games and play any tournaments. Um, but you could still run, you know, hot in cash games. And uh, so I was, it was a combination of, you know, there wasn't a lot of good players at that time. And I probably ran hot, which gives you more time to practice and learn and yeah. and uh, and get better. And um, and then you know I don't even know how much longer, uh, but I wasn't looking for a job anymore. You know after that, so um, it was just poker from there on basically until Black Black Friday, two thousand eleven. That's two thousand eleven, Black Friday, yeah. and that was kind of good timing with DFS kind of popping up. Did you start playing DFS that early, like around 2011? No, no. Um, the first I heard of it was, again, through like that Taylor started another company. He started a DFS site like in in their infancy. But I think that was still a year or two after that. Um, but I didn't play on that site. Um, you know, and then they hired uh, Ricky D, actually. Oh really? Um, mm -hmm. And he wore that's where he got his introduction to DFS. And he saw like on the back end, like there was guys actually winning because he was a poker player too. That's how he knew them. Yeah. And he's like, Oh, maybe I should do this. You know, like this guy could do it. Cause he was, you know, just working there for a job. And uh, I wasn't uh, sharp enough to recognize Probably, I think it was 2012 or 13. A uh, my my ex my ex wife's brother um, came up to me at a you know family party or whatever. He's like, check this out, and it was the DraftKings you know live leaderboard of a contest he was in. It was an NFL Sunday, and he was you know whatever eighth hundredth out of like 300 thousand people. I don't know. It was you know who knows how the size back then, but it was big, and. And I was like, wait, is 300,000 people play this? I was I was totally shocked. And like right then I was like, okay, if, if 300,000 people play it, I know I could beat it. I'm yeah. I, I know I'm going to be smarter than these guys. Right. You know, I, I, you have to, I guess, be, it sounds cocky, but I think it's just like law of yeah. averages, you know? Yeah. Like, because also, you know, you don't have to be like smart. Like just, I know I'll get upset. I'll, I'm, I could get obsessed and, and, you know, just, Think of think of ways that I could beat these guys who aren't going to put the time in, you know, right. not just like um. Well, Einstein. and also like if, if it's if it's five guys playing, like maybe you run into five sharp guys. Where if it's three hundred thousand, it's not going to be three hundred thousand yeah, no sharp people. Yeah, yeah. You look at a room of three hundred thousand people. That's like a benefit of working in sports. You yeah. get you get you know you get five thousand people right in front of you. You're like, yeah, oh, not impressed. <laughs> not impressed. Right. Um, yeah. I get so, it. yeah. So that, that was that was it, but I already had uh, a career by then. So um, I started working in politics, and then eventually the government in like 2011 or 12. Okay. So, so like right after, right like after. a year year after the shut. Yeah. Like I tried some of the uh, the you know offshore you know non regulated poker sites that popped up, um, but like they were really messing with people and like changing the rake programs and and the game and it was just like the games were, you know, all the pros who got kicked off these sites just moved over to the sites that had like 50 people, you know, and now they have 1500 people, but you know, four, you know, 1450 of them are pros right. who, who, who don't want to get a real job. And so like it was, the games weren't great quickly. They weren't great, you know, like, and so, uh, so I, you know, I started, 
uh, getting a job through connections and stuff like that. And I was always into politics and stuff. So it were it just worked out luckily to get, to get that job. So I didn't want to do a DFS cause I didn't, I'm like, I, didn't, I don't, this is going to take up way too much time. I know how, yeah. how obsessed you have to be and how much practice you have to, to do. To, Although you didn't really back then <laughs> to beat these people. <laughs> I mean, suppose, yeah, I mean, you still needed to do something. I say that, and I was a losing player. Like, I, I was getting well, my ass handed to me back then. So, you also, too, Neil, there was no projections, there was no ownership, there was yeah. no, so you had to build all that stuff from the bottom up, right? Um, so there was, um, there, 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 there was some, some work. So I didn't want to do it, and I was telling like one of, one of my brothers, like, why don't you do this? You know, my buddy who's like really into sports, you know, I was still into sports back then, actually. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm telling you, I guarantee you could, you could beat this. And like, I don't know. No one was like trying. And so then I just like one day I was just like, all right, I'm going to try to beat this, you know? And I told my, my, uh, uh, my, my ex, like, I'm going to be concentrating on this like every day for months on end. So be prepared. Uh, really? So you went in like, me. I am going to be doing this. Like it wasn't like, like a lot of us just kind of like start playing a little bit. Like it's sort of fun and then uh, like get obsessed over time. But you were like, you made the decision. Like I'm going to do this. Yeah. 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 I actually, I did it with sports betting maybe a year and a half earlier too, or maybe, maybe yeah. a little bit less. And it was just too hard. Sports betting was hard, you know? Um, like uh, it's just a different, uh, uh, you know, it, like I didn't, the thing with sports betting, I didn't want to deal with all like the unregulated sites and moving around money around and stuff like that. It was just like, it was so, and it was really hard and annoying. You know, it's DFS is what is much more fun, I think. But, um, so I had some of the stuff saved from sports betting that I could carry over to, sure. but yeah, I was consciously like warning people in my life that, yeah, this is, this is what I'm going to be doing, trying to beat for the next whatever. And I, um, I can tell you that your Roto Grinders profile was created February 1st, 2015. Was this, had you been playing for a little while at that point? Or was that? Yeah, I was playing point? before then. Okay, that's what mm -hmm. I thought. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't want to make an account uh, on Roto Grinders. Yeah. Um, it's so long ago. Who knows the reasons? But, uh, yeah, I, I my my I, I would imagine 2013 is probably my first like just just to sign up and play a game. Okay, it's probably late 2013, and then 2014 was when I was getting my feet wet and starting to take it seriously. When you were like, "I'm going to do this. I'm going to be focused on this. This is going to." Was it your job immediately at that point? Like at that point, were you like you out of the government? Like I'm just going to do DFS full time, or what? What was the? No, I wasn't that crazy. Okay. Uh, I didn't quit my job till 2017. After you, so so did you win in like right when you started playing 2016, 2015, whatever? Yeah, two, two, 2014. I might have won one in 2014, uh, but I didn't quit even after I won my first one for sure. I didn't quit till I won a a, a pretty good amount. I'm trying to find your uh, your latest. I, I can see you know your biggest scores on your Roto Grinders profile. Mm -hmm. You can no longer like click. It used to be you could click into it and like see like your lot. You know your top thousand some. I I'm not seeing that here. I'm seeing 2017. Your fourth highest is a PGA in uh in two. But you're, it was a fifty three hundred dollar buy in. So I'm guessing that you had won something prior to that fifty three hundred dollar buy in. That's uh, that's the oldest that I can find. But yeah, I don't even remember that one. Um. Uh. I, I remember my first one was the four dollar twenty max NBA for twenty thousand the first or something like that. Um, I didn't know they were doing those that far back. The twenty max four dollars. That's interesting. Pretty sure that maybe, maybe it wasn't twenty was. max, but it, it wasn't. I'm pretty sure it was four dollars, and I'm pretty sure it was twenty thousand the first. And DraftKings or FanDuel? DraftKings. Okay. And I had. I was in first, sweating a lineup that had Chris Paul, and Chris Paul pulled a hammy. Oh God! So it was great because I was first, and I was sweating with Chris Paul. Oh, you're sweating. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. That's uh, yeah, exactly that's, that's yeah. <laughs> luck, you know, a little bit, a little bit of luck. Um, but yeah, that was definitely my first one. 
uh, and it felt it felt good. It felt good. I, I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, it's, it's a like, good feeling. Those early ones are the ones that like they're like the most memorable. The the earliest big wins where it's like, okay, I knew that I could do this, but like now I know that I can win at this. And I was like, I was like, yes, now I finally have a bankroll. And you know, little did I know, you know, twenty thousand does not go far when you're when you're one fifty maxing. Let me uh, let me throw this question at you since it is relevant to what we're talking about. Uh, Goes cards. Charles says, "How much does volume entering correlate to EV in DFS?" Well, I I'm, I mean, I think you might need to rephrase that question. It correlates like, probably. Um. Yeah, but EV doesn't work like that. Like EV is yeah. like I think he's probably trying to say how much does volume entering correlate to someone who's plus EV. But like just yeah, yeah, right, right. Just yeah. the EV. I, think, I, think I don't think mean. that makes any sense. The the question, but I think what he's saying is how much does volume entering correlate to someone who's plus EV? Maybe yeah, like someone. That, who's, that, yeah. That's my interpretation. Yeah, yeah. I would say I would say pretty heavily. Um, yeah, correlates. Um, to Unless like you've got a ton of money, like even if you break even, you and you're playing super heavy volume, um, you know you you paid a million dollars in rake, you know or something. Yeah, it's not on it's not unheard of. It happens quite quite often, and that's pretty amazing to like you know like if there was no rake, you'd be a millionaire, uh, because your volume's so high and you're you know you're you're beating enough of the competition to break even. So, yeah, the vo- the volume volume definitely matters, and usually you can't have volume unless you you've won previously. You know, to, to play for the games, and I would say most of the guys who play heavy volume. I mean, let's admit it; they're all good, right? Right? They're all they're plus all EV good. players. They're very few. Are yeah, uh, even if they're not plus EV, like, well, plus like. You know they might be they might be down, but still be plus EV, or they might be up but not be plus EV. You know, but like they're still all good. You know, right. they're not like they're not Throwing like money away. Yeah, these guys know what they're doing. If you if they're if they're if they're betting you know five ten million in volume every year for decade, they're they're not unless they're like super rich and just for some reason have this money to burn. <laughs> not EOM points out parlay picker. Uh, yeah, maybe, if, maybe an exception to the rule. If you're stealing $22 million from your employer, yes, yeah. that's an exception. Everyone, you know, but if, if it's all your own money you've earned from DFS, then you're, pr- you're probably pretty good. Yeah. There, there are people out there who just have a ton of money and can throw it at DFS, but there's not that many and not that many who'd be interested in keeping on playing when they're down 22 million or whatever yeah. it was. Yeah, and some of these guys are cash game players, and they just they play they play the tourneys, you know, not they don't really care about their hundred, you know, their ninety eighth lineup, you know. So there's a bunch of different ways to play the game. Um, so one thing that yeah. I've I've realized more like the past couple of years is I thought that I knew all the best players in DFS like a few years ago, and I like the, the more I get into it, the more I'm like there are so many great DFS players that I've never heard of before because they just don't play the lottos that I play. Right. Yeah, sure. Certainly. Yeah. And there's guys who pop up, guys who who stop playing and yeah, there's there's a lot of good players. Yeah, there there are a lot of good players. Unfortunately. Um, right. And and good tools that are making it harder yeah. and harder. Um all right. So we we've got 20 minutes until 9, so maybe we'll go another 10 and then you can run your stuff. Yeah. Let's um, do it. I've got a couple questions that I that I've thought of as we're talking. Do you, do you still play uh poker at all? I, 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 um, I was just listening to an interview about with Billy Joel, you know, the, the pianist yeah, and yeah. he stopped writing songs. I don't know if you, if you, I mean, we're similar age. So you piano know, man does not. Oh, man. Yeah. And, and it's like, why would he stop writing songs? Like, just try it. Like, and I'm like thinking like, wait, I haven't played a hand of poker in like a decade. Cause I'm so burnt out. Yeah. It's like, it, it could be in, and how many people would be like, you've got, 
to play poker for a living? How fun is that? And you're like, none, not fun at all. Uh, stressful as hell. Yeah, I can imagine. I never played poker. Not as bad living, as but... DFS stress wise, but yeah, like, you know, imagine like even you, you know, like working at Stochastic and playing DFS and having a show that people listen to, you know, like hundreds of thousands of dudes would love to be in your shoes, you know? Um, but like, it doesn't change the fact that people get burned out even on cool stuff. So like, it's yeah. just, a, and so like, like that's a long, long winded answer to your question is I don't, I don't play poker anymore uh, at all. I'm kind of getting over it. You might go back to it. One of these days you might like give it. I think casually. I could now, but like yeah. a year and a half ago, two years ago, I still couldn't, but like, um, I don't think that's going to happen because the tools in poker are worse than online. I'm talking just strictly online. Oh, okay. I, I don't really love in person anymore either. Like I played a ton in person. Like I said, I would go to the casino every day back in the day, but I don't know. I just don't, I don't like the interactions with, uh, <laughs> with people uh, a ton, you know, um, you, you talked I, about that. Uh, I can't remember where you talked about this, but you were talking about it with Pete at one point, how like it's so much more personal playing poker than DFS because it's like face to face. Like you you grow to like hate your opponents. Um, so my question is, who do you hate in DFS? Right, right, right. Um, yeah, in poker, I hated everybody. <laughs> okay. In DF, in DF, I mean, the, the guy who, the, the biggest hater is Ricky D. That guy, oh. that guy hates everybody. Yeah. Uh, every opponent he has, even in DFS, uh, I didn't really hate, I don't really hate anybody. Um, I guess I get jealous. <laughs> maybe <laughs> We all do. Yeah. Yeah. I could get jealous of people. Um, but like, I don't. So like last week you had on shady, right. And yeah. on, and like the day after he won that hundred K I took fourth and it was like by two points. Right. Yeah. And, uh, the he had a, he had Gigi Jackson and for some reason in a blowout they were in they were injury depleted but the coach kept him in and yeah. not everyone else in like a 60 point blowout to get like an unbelievable amount of garbage points and just any any at any point if the coach pulls him out he doesn't get two of those cuz all the lineups in front of me had fucking this Gigi Jackson oh no yeah I, and so you, I and you were won. two points out in fourth place it was like two and a half it was real, oh, real close uh, maybe it was three or something. It was very close. Um, but even that, like, I don't hate him. Like he just got lucky, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and I wish I did, you know, I wish, I wish right. it went the other way, but like he didn't do it. Now, if we were playing cards and he tricked me and he stacked me and I fell for it, then I met, and then I'm angry, you know, like it's yeah. much more personal that way than DFS. Yeah. Like he didn't make a shot. You know, he just has, you know, he just did some dumb algorithm <laughs> like I would do. Yeah. And his was a little luckier, you know. Uh, so, like, it's hard. It, it's, I don't know. I don't. Um, It's more, more like if, like, you know, I find you annoying or something like that. Yeah. But that's just a personal thing. Right. Not, not even DFS related. I didn't actually expect you to give me a name. <laughs> it would have been, would have been great content if you did give me a name with somebody you hate in DFS, but I, I had a feeling you were not going to like start throwing out names of people that you legitimately hate in DFS. Um, would have even, even EM2. Like we've had a lot of beefs with EM2. <laughs> I, I don't hate EM2. Your, your Twitter all. banner is like my favorite Twitter banner out there. <laughs> <laughs> That's good work. Yeah. yeah. That was, what that happened was to EM2? Is he, is, has he come back? Or is no. He still, uh, still disappeared. Hmm. No. No, we started talking, you know, through before he left Twitter a little bit, you know, on DMs and stuff like that. So like I don't I don't care. You know, he's he's you know, he's an interesting personality. But like I don't I, I could care less if he wins one, you know, like it doesn't it doesn't it's not the same as poker. I don't know. It just doesn't bother me as much. I wonder if I played a, more cash games. I mean, I used to play all the games, you know, cash D, when DFS was much easier. It was just a no-brainer. Just throw in the optimal and a bunch of cash, cash games. But not anymore, you know. So I stopped that a while ago. Um, you don't so play any cash these days. It's I'm deciding whether I'm going to play MLB cash on Yahoo this coming up. Uh, I'm like 50-50 because um, once they switch to a CSV, some like more and more sharks moved over there because it was just easier they, for them to put the their lineups in. Yep. 
So it was kind of like a little barrier to entry to keep sharks out. Yeah. And uh, so I don't, I, I, I have to be, you know, one of the highest on Yahoo of all time. I yeah. would say. Were um, you, uh, I feel like you were not banned when they did the like banning sharks thing for a little bit. Remember that when Yahoo was like, we're going to be, it's shark free over here. You can yeah. play on Yahoo. I feel like I, I was not banned. I think Alex was not banned or I, I feel like you were not like, it was just like, kind it of random made no like, sense. They banned to like two random people. <laughs> right. And then never mentioned it again. And I was like, yeah. okay, let's not talk about this on the show Yeah. until I get banned. Uh, but yeah, that hit me worrying that that was going to be a, a trend. Yeah. I, I remember you talking it could about still it. Maybe we talked about it. Yeah. It I could. still it think could. it could happen. I, I don't think it's the dumbest thing in the world for DraftKings to ban a few a few players. The the liquidity they get though is so huge in DFS comparatively to you know poker or something like that. Um that I'm not sure they can. I mean they, um, they sort of do it in the like they have contests just for beginners. Like, isn't that enough? Just like here are contests that you can't play once you've won. I don't, I don't know what the amount is or you played a certain number of entries, but like, isn't that enough? To keep people satisfied. Yeah. Yeah. It depends on how much political pressure they get. Yeah. If they're really cracking down, I don't know. Maybe they'll sacrifice a few pros on the altar. Like, because if you, the reason it's, you know, it doesn't kill them that everyone loses, you know, everyone's losing yeah. rakes. Right. But there is the issue of like, let's say, you know, you, you know, Yuda is, is gobbling up, you know, 40% of the profits. So we're talking about reality here. Okay. <laughs> and you just get rid of him. And then the lower tier guys kind of spread it around a little more, keeping yeah. people playing longer and making the games bigger. Like that's an argument. I don't know why I'm saying this publicly because I don't want them yeah. to do any of this. <laughs> right. But like I could see, I could see some of those internal discussions going, have you know, happening. I bet. Yeah. Uh, but may, maybe not. Maybe maybe they don't even think that deeply. Yeah, I don't uh, think they do. But yeah, I guess I. Well, what do I know? Um, that's uh, that would be really disappointing if they if they did. Start. I mean, they are, obviously they do it on like sports betting books already, so uh, would not be that shocking. Are you are you to the point now that you think you do we have all the news? What do you say, people in chat? Do we have all the news? We we do have all the news, but um, I can talk while while I do this. Okay, yeah, um, you can if you can do it while talking. Then yeah. Um, so yeah, the the adjustments too are not as much at least the way I play NBA DFS uh, late as night, so this shouldn't be too hard. Um. The uh, uh, the slate today, by the way, this is just a brief aside on NBA since I'm, I have to do this anyway, yeah. is really kind of a perfect late swap slate. So there was some injury news, yep. but one of the benefits of of this slate is there's early games and then a break and then yeah. late games. So you get way more information in your sim. It's... I mean, it's it's perfect for you. I'm, I'm I'm debating whether it's perfect for like everybody in in that case. Like, if you have advanced oh. sims, it's obviously helpful for you. Do you think that? I mean, do you think everybody would like it this way? Like these? No, these no, no, no. Like it's worse for the casual player. Yeah, I'm just saying from the point of view, if you're trying to get the most out of the late swap. So, like a lot of people, they'll late swap every every game, every half an hour. Yeah. That I mean, that's how I do it too. Do too. I'm not yeah. saying it's it's wrong, but like your information edge is not nearly as big because right. you know you, you, the scores you know it's like so you know so who, just make up a name sabonis played an early game team he's got seven points you know 30 minutes into the game like what is that right. it doesn't you tell you no much. how he's gonna do yeah but now we got like the full games played the a lot of lineups populated you have way more information so you mean information not just in like having all of the lineup news the injury news, it's like information on in terms of how your lineups are actually doing, like the players in the contest, the how you, how the players are doing. Yeah, um, yeah. How, how many what the line what your opponent's lineups are comprised of, and also how they're doing in that very that very moment. You got the full games played out. And ownership of, of all those players. And then you can adjust ownership even more accurately. Yeah. 
I so, so this is uh, you know I, I worked for Stochastic, so may, maybe I should know this. I don't get the impression that any of the publicly available Sims actually have the ability, like, are, are factoring in what has already happened into Late Swap. Is that is that your understanding, or do you think that they are actually? No, Saber Sim does. They do factor in what has already mm -hmm. happened into their late swaps. Interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's um, yeah. That feels like we're, we're getting close to like the final frontier. Like it's just a matter of people. Yeah. Using the the publicly available tools. I, I agree. I um, wish that wasn't true, but. Okay. Yeah, Ryan, uh, saying the same thing. Um, yeah, that's uh, that is tough because you know then if you update at the last minute like this just making the best possible swaps for your lineups assuming their projections are good um right and uh, and assuming the the fields that your your sim provider is making is good which is a bit which i you know i mean i i don't think they are but uh, so do they do they not update for what is known of the field i'm assuming no they, they do they they yeah, update they so so they know yeah, I, guess. I mean, I, like the later you get, like the more information you have, like this kind of slate, perfect for that kind of thing, for for that kind of, you know, live sims where it's like, right. you know exactly what the field is at this point. Um, hmm. But I was saying like the, 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 the pre, the pre, like the pre lock sims, I don't think are that great right now. Okay. The, the fields pre lock are not that I great. think they'll get better over time, but I don't think they're fully there yet. Yeah, that's uh, that that uh, seems like it's the, the toughest part of the Sims is is simulating what the field lineups are actually going to look at. I remember when when Stochastic first came out with their Sims and they didn't provide the field for you early on. They quickly started providing the field, but I was like, Jesus, how do I do this? Like at first, it's like it seems so simple at first. Like okay, I just need to like match the ownerships. Like we have ownership projections, and but then it's like that doesn't actually build you out the lineups with those like with, with use like Fantasy Cruncher or something. It's not easy to do that kind of stuff. So yeah, yeah, that's, that's what I spent really two happened. years doing on my own Sims. Two years, damn. Yeah, that's. I mean, yeah. I can imagine that would take a long time. You got to figure out like combinatorial i don't know it's uh it's definitely above my pay grade like a lot of the stuff like even though i don't have a programming background a lot of these types of things i can kind of conceptualize how i might do it if i uh -huh. but that, that's kind of thing like i can't even think of like how the hell would i even do that i would have to have to think pretty hard to even figure out how i would even conceptually try to build a good field for a dfs lineup so uh kudos to you i guess that's that's well, how you stay ahead of the field <laughs> i suppose um but it doesn't matter anymore because because Saberson has it, yeah, basically, yeah. That's uh, I see you looking like you're. Uh, are you studying your lineups right now? Are you thinking about? I was looking. Yeah, I was deciding whether the the problem is in the the high stakes. My lineups are dead, and so it's giving me a bunch of shitty players, which is because like it needs the chalk to fail for my shitty yeah. players to do it. Shitty to, players to do well to like cash. And I don't want to accept it, you know, even though I just have to. I don't, you know, I, mean, I don't want to, I, I don't want to play John Conchar, but I have to because, you know, that's what it's telling me. Yeah. I mean, Does but that makes sense or did I not explain that? No. Yeah. So, so you're, it's putting in shitty players to, to give you the best chance of just min cashing in the contest. Yeah. You're not even trying to win the contest at this point. You're just trying to min cash. Right. Right. And, right. But you don't want to do it, but like, why not? I mean, <laughs> if, if, if you just play the, if you're locked, if you're like blocked from all the cash line with the popular players, I don't know why, why not just do it? Yeah. Because I don't like those players and they stink. <laughs> That's fair. I don't want to yeah. play John Conchar either, to be fair. So I'll give you that. Uh, maybe I'll drop him one. Let's just drop. Let's just see what happens. You're going to drop his projection. No, I'm going to take him out of one of my, I only have four in the, oh, okay, okay. so I'm yeah. going to just take him out of one. Um, I mean, all right, I guess I could live with this. All right, let's... This, one, this one's two hundred fifty k to first, right? Yeah, two hundred fifty k. I'll never see. Yeah, anybody I know up there? Uh, in first, or you, should... you know, have me... what? I guess we have three full games left, so it's like kind of irrelevant. Uh, yeah. Let me let me like the guys who are winning will not be winning, so forget them. Who's got a stud lineup? Oh, I guess this Sully Broccoli or Okay. Yeah. Sully Brochill. Oh, is, is that what that is? I think so. 
All right. Well, he looks he won like the million uh, in that big contest uh, on a on a stack correction over Shady. So Shady gets unlucky sometimes too. That was we were. I don't. Uh, I don't believe you. I was cheering for him, and he. Uh, I mean, I, I like Sully Bro Chill too, but I was talking to Shady at the time, so I was cheering for him. And then, uh, yeah, stack correction that's, after the fact. That's a kick in the nuts. Yeah, yeah, that's that's a tough Papa way to Gates. lose a million. Papa Gates has a good lineup. Let me ask you this, and this this might I hope this doesn't sting you. Um, uh, do you think that you might be have the most six figure wins of any DFS player who does not have a seven figure win? Yeah, I would I would put money on it. You would put money on having the most. That's yeah, that I probably would too. I mean, uh, hearing you say it, I definitely would. But even before that, I'm like, yeah, I think that you've probably won as many. Like, I can't think of anybody else who has not won the Millie who has won as much as you have in DFS. But I actually, but I don't know, like all the like. Condia, like, did he ever win a milli? Like, I don't, and I don't know. Oh if... God, yeah. Okay, maybe, yeah, maybe I have to think about it. Like, did did he mind. rack up enough six figure wins in the like two years maybe. that he played though? Like, to I don't think they had that many big. Pops yeah, also back that then. that's true. Yeah, yeah. It was Alex. Yeah, but then Alex won one. But then he had to go ahead ago. and win a couple millies. Oh, has he won two now? I think he's got two. That might be right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, that just that just means you're a worse player than Millie Maker winners, obviously. Well, I mean, it's probably true, honestly. <laughs> what so, do you mean? Oh, you mean then Alex? Yeah. Well, the, not only that, like, I mean, there, the, the, you, I mean, you can only blame so much on bad luck, you know. So, um, I mean, with the Millie Maker, it's I don't know. It's I think you can. That's true, but <laughs> I've not that I've, many. I've played thousands of them at this point. Yeah. Still, I I. You've won enough six-figure wins that I wouldn't I wouldn't hold it against yourself. It's yeah. clearly just a matter of variance of the contest you win versus the contest you don't win. Um, yeah. Are you are you done with your with your I'm, late I'm, Yeah, I'm done. So. Oh, okay. Cool. Cool. Um, yeah, Pete. Pete had mentioned on a, I think last week on Lowell's, Pete mentioned that you had said that uh, Saber Sims product was looking very similar to your process. Is that is that an accurate statement? Uh, think that's what what pete kind of suggested you had mentioned yeah. that at one point it was Obviously there, there's more to your process i think beyond the like running the sims is at least my understanding um probably similar to like i, I know that uh shady for example does a little bit more after running the sims getting the best lineups together he, he does a little bit more to uh to find what he wants to play um so my my understanding is that you do kind of the same thing yeah um uh I my Sims had a couple different things than theirs, okay. Um, that I think are pretty pretty useful. Um, that I kind of hope they don't do. So so we'll see. And then yeah, there's 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 like Shady was talking about some portfolio stuff. Yeah, that I'm always trying to figure out. Um, it's it's hard though. It's complicated to 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 do the portfolio stuff in my opinion. So I've tried like a bunch of different ideas over the years to tighten up that 150. That's what I kind of think what's going on now here in the next year is like get out, get rid of your 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 bottom range of shitty lineups is I think kind of the next step. So even if you're going to enter 150, this is what I'm trying, trying to figure out the bottom range of my 150 lineups that just keep showing up in the Sims as negative EV and just figuring out a way to get rid of them and, or just don't do 150, which is, which is what I've been doing in like MMA, uh, doopy sports because, um, of the way I play, which is trying not to dupe, you 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 now now you go you know you you win instead of winning you know two percent of the time you win one percent of the time right if that but you're hopefully only splitting it one two three ten ways um so like you're you know you, your role has to be huge to play that way and you swing so much um that if you can like eliminate your bottom range, you know, of lineups. And if you look at these Sims, you go, you go back and do your research. Everyone has their bottom the end of their lineups stink. Every one fifty maxer. Yeah. Everyone's got like, oh. you know, maybe someone's had all plus EV 
one fifties, you know, I'm sure it happens in like but, NBA or like, or large NFL slates, maybe. Yeah, sure. Like, I mean, it, it depends like in the high stakes games, man, there'll be like one guy plus EV, three guys plus EV. Oh, really? Yeah. It's rough. It's rough. But in the, um, uh, in the, you know, the low mid stakes, whatever you want to call them, um, you know, someone's, you know, whoever's the top ranked one fifty. You go through their lineups, go to the bottom of them, and I guarantee the bottom, you know, 10, 15, 20 lineups are usually negative ROI. Expect it. So, so you want to obviously you want to get rid of what uh, I think Blender re- refers to them as loss leaders, uh, these lineups that are negative EV if you're going to play a 150 set. Right. Um, and you're saying so, so you're either get rid of them or find a way to replace them with plus EV lineups, which, right. Yeah, get yeah, get rid of just a broad term for yeah, either replace them or just cut them out if you can. But it's not, you know, it's not easy because you kind of don't really know for sure until after the slate's over. Because you don't know until you know what everybody else did, essentially. Kind of, yeah. You're still guessing, right? So so it's tough. There's there's that with this, you know, portfolio management idea of you know basically balancing. Uh, there's some more complicated concepts to it, but yeah. Um, you know, it's also like balancing within, like if you're playing, I mean, you you say just like within your 150, but like shady tries to like balance within like his high stakes versus his low stakes. And I know, I know there are some DFS players who try to balance like in the, well, if I'm, I'm playing hundred percent of this player in the 150 max, but then not playing them at all in high stakes. And like, that's kind of a different way to balance things. Um, do you, do you, anything, do you do anything like that? I don't, yeah, no, I don't do that. Okay. Um, you know, yeah. So I have like, you know, $2,000 on one player in the high stakes then yeah, no, the, I just keep, treat those as two separate, two okay. separate things. Um, but it does, I mean, it's true. You know, Alex has talked about that a little bit. You know, if you, if you have one lineup in the eight, 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 that's, you know, 30% of your buy-in tonight, you right. know, that's pretty pretty crazy uh to think about but no i'm i'm really trying like just int- intra correlation and intra uh portfolio management okay. for for that specific contest yeah yeah not not like that's i feel like that's more like bankroll management yeah uh not um says i'm i'm a complete idiot but i think people got brainwashed into max entering maybe like i <sighs> It's for, for like me and I, I don't max enter anymore uh, after losing enough. I was like, all right, I'm, I'm not doing this anymore, but I was for a long time, but it was just like when I felt like I had an edge, like for most of us, we can't tell which of our lineups is going to be the good one. So like some, some nights I would win and it would be my 89th lineup or, you know, one, one of my later lineups. So it's, you know, I, I don't know. I, I think uh, maybe, maybe people still do it because they're brainwashed, but I also think for most of us, we don't have a great way to figure out ahead of time, which of our lineups are actually plus EV. Right, right. Um, I mean, and, but I mean, that's what the Sims are there for, right? So, right. So, so theoretically, if they keep improving these, it shouldn't be too hard to do that. But again, the more they improve them, the harder the games get, generally speaking. And so, what's the point? Um, I I kind of agree with them, though. I I do think, I think a lot of pros or whatever high volume guys blindly one fifty. Yeah, um, it's an arbitrary it, number. Like, it's not like that was a scientifically decided number. It's law. right, right. Yeah, and I think if they looked at the the ROI uh, results and stuff like that, maybe they'd maybe they change their mind. But a lot of people don't trust the ROI. They don't trust the new sims. They don't think they're accurate. They think the games are are easier than I do, um, which is fine. It's you know. That's fine, you know. Maybe maybe I'm wrong, but I, I I think the games are significantly harder than before, and so when they were significantly easier, it's a lot easier to get away with maxing 150. Yeah, and then you only have like one line at five lineups that stink, just because the field's worse. Yeah. Um, I want I want to uh, ask you. So you say, well, that's where you have the Sims to determine which of your lineups are plus EV, but like you're not playing lineups that are not plus EV before the contest runs. Right. So you don't really know because you don't know what the field is going to do. No, but you could try to like, see what characteristics lineups that tend to be minus EV 
uh, have and just kind of X them out. Okay. Um, like I said, it's, I don't have it down yet, you know, so it's just something I'm, I think is something to work on for. I mean, I, in my mind, DFS is, is, you know, slowly dying. Like I, I, I know, if you ever say that, people go, "Oh, it's not dying." Blah blah blah. It's, it's like, yeah, slowly, slowly oh, dying. Like it's yeah. definitely gotten harder for everyone who's been around for nine, ten years. Yeah, come on, it's fucking obvious. It's gotten the tools have gotten better. The and it and I don't think they understand like the concept of like exponential growth, right? So like if these sim sites exponentially improve, like it'll very quickly be not worth it to play um now that doesn't mean it'll ever go away the lottery still exists you know scratch off tickets sell by the thousands so dfs of course will always be around as will sports betting and it's fun and you could play it for entertainment but i think there's a lot of equity swapping going on do you really in dfs uh yeah, let me let me rephrase that. I, I meant like variance oh. swapping. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Um, but there is equity swapping too, but that's a different topic. Yeah, very very var- var- variance swapping. I think of like you know, there's clearly like I think Raging Phillips really good at, at NBA. I think he's like the best. But like, there's other guys who are clearly a notch above everyone else. Um. And they and they're no ballers. Like they're making their own projections. You could look at their lineups and you could tell they're higher on certain guys. Is this like a Travis Petty or? Sure, sure, Travis. Um, so that that is an edge, and it still matters. And as long as you can maintain that, you theoretically should still should still uh, should still win. So the projections, you know, is a big part of it. But they're getting pretty good at those too. You know, um, so, I mean, I, I, the Sims can't really totally figure it out, but I think they can get enough guys who weren't, weren't going to be even, you know, or close to even or slightly above even who weren't ever going to touch that. Yeah. And then very quickly they could, they could get close to that, which doesn't mean they're going to be winners, but it sucks. And then, you know, the closer the gap gets, the more we're all just trading variants. Like, right. you know, 1%, you you know, if you're you know, it's under 150 and you have a 1% chance to win, that's really good. 1% right. chance, you know, uh, 2% is, you know, really good. It depends on the night and how many entries there are, but I'm talking about like super large field here. Um, You know, so you should win one in every hundred. You know, that's, that's, that's what, once every three months? If that in three and a half months, really, with days off, right? Uh, I know you you had said at one point that you need to win six figures like once a month to like, yeah, like once a money. month. Yeah, is that is that still accurate? Like, are you still playing that kind of volume? Uh, I'm not. I'm not playing as much volume as I used to. Okay, so it doesn't you need still kind of need like once every month and a half. Yeah, yeah. I mean, because you're you know you're they they've been changing the payout the uh, buy in. I'm sorry. You know they do more four dollars now, but the fifteen dollar you're you know you're paying three grand a pop. That's thirty grand a month, <laughs> right? Yeah. Thirty grand a month, and uh, you do get some years back, but um, you know if you don't win one, a couple months, you know you're 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 screwed. True. So um, yeah, I've, you, I've been there, so I know. Um, yeah, and that can very easily happen, very easily. What uh? What is your uh? To to the extent you're willing to share, what, what what's your biggest downswing? Oh, it's a lot, it's a lot, like a million. Oh damn, really? Yeah. I remember you you saying on Lowe's you were like uh because you you referenced Adam had said that he had been on like hundred and fifty thousand dollar downswing or something like that and you're like man I wish that that that, that was my biggest downswing so uh yeah, I, I, yeah. yeah I know I hear these guys and I'm like what am I doing wrong Jesus <laughs> I mean you you've done a lot right to be in the position where you can lose a million most of us like, I, like myself I didn't lose nearly that much because I couldn't afford to lose a million dollars so I think I think it's you. I think it's the high I don't think they were playing high stakes um, yeah also true. Which or as much, you know, um, you could just dump a fucking boatload of money in those 
so yeah the but like yeah i don't know like if you're you know you know if you're playing i don't know i i would go crazy on nfls too sometimes you know i, I lost yeah. like two hundred thousand one day in nfl once jesus um, i the most i ever played was forty thousand in a day and i was like losing my mind i was like why the fuck did i do this and then ended up getting like winning thirty thousand back on one entry so i didn't lose that much on the day but i was that was so stressful for me i, I cannot imagine having two hundred thousand dollars like, much less there are people who have like a million dollars in play yeah. on an nfl sunday and that's just blows my mind that there are people that play that kind of volume um, yeah i don't play that that volume anymore though um and i don't i don't think i i ever will honestly i'm not sure <clears throat> Yeah, I mean, the games are like tough. You said, it's, it's getting so much harder in DFS. Like, yeah. why would you play that? You much can't. You can't. Days? In my opinion, you can't just like blindly enter a whole bunch of stuff anymore. Like, it no. should be way more strategic nowadays. Like, you know, the three max or single entries, and even looking and see, you know, maybe waiting, seeing if there's overlay stuff. Like, it's just the edges are smaller, so you gotta you gotta dig, which is not fun. <laughs> it's like that's not how I like. I'm not like a bonus hunter gambler. I want to play right. like. I practice, you practice, and then who's who's better wins, you know, like, right. you know, th that's like a video game, you know, or something like that. Like that's, but there's just so much variance in DFS. It's crazy. I want to go back to, so, so you brought up exponential growth as like pe people don't factor that in as far as like the Sims making people players so much better, but isn't it also just a matter of like how many players have access to the Sims? And, and I have no idea what the numbers are right now for either Saber, Sims, Stochastic, like the number of people that are using the sims um is that a concern for you that like they're going to lower the prices to to the point where more people are using them more of the field is using sims or hopefully they go the opposite direction but that was my guess originally is it'll eventually be a race to the bottom and they'll all like lower their prices a little bit a little bit down to 60 bucks or 80 bucks or something but may, may, maybe that doesn't make sense. Maybe it just makes more sense for them to keep it higher and just get the bigger payday from the regulars. Well, also, it has diminishing returns for the companies. If if you make it cheaper and cheaper, then it's like more people using it. Like these lineups then become not plus EV. If, if everybody's playing the same lineup pool, then suddenly they're duping each other. And, you know, I feel like we've seen that a little bit already. People using similar sims are then duping each other in these contests and uh, they're probably not actually plus EV, even though they would have been if they were not duped kind of thing. Um, do, do you think there's any a possibility, at least, of like enough people using The Sims, playing very, very similar lineups, that maybe there will be a new way to win to like see what The Sims are doing, see what The Sims are giving people, and maybe kind of go into a, a different direction in your lineups? Um, like the, In theory, though, then The Sims should adjust for that adjustment. Yeah, that's true. In, you know, in so like the Sims should know that everyone's going to be on Xander Shoffley tomorrow because this, the Sims are telling them to go to Xander Shoffley. So now we're going to make the field more Xander Shoffley heavy. And now we rerun the Sims, you know, that. Yeah. So it, sh it should eventually all work itself out. The, yeah. the, I mean, I think PGA has definitely gotten way more into – you know, variance trading bill because I, I'm like, I don't think you can have a huge projection edge, especially when so either, but people one of the to. sites has like the guy who makes the market in sports betting doing their projections, you know, mm. like it just doesn't seem, I talked offline with you about this and, and like what I used to do was compare the head to head, market in pga with projections and the odds and stuff and that's part of how i made did my my projections so like you know if 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 jordan spieth was beating xander in a head-to-head -head market on bet online or some big sports book it makes very little sense for you know the projections to be higher and the outrights to be higher a lot of the time sometimes it makes sense because they're like less they're more likely to make a cut and stuff like sure. that so like, but the guy who moves those lines is making projections now. <laughs> so what, why am I, I, that's why I stopped. I'm like, why am I even looking at these? Oh, did you not even play PGA anymore? Or do you just, you just stop? No, I, st I stopped, I stopped scraping that data okay, and making okay. projections. 
Because yeah. that's literally was I thought was my edge. Yeah. From the projection side. I st- and then I would run it through a sim, my own sim, which I still have. But um, because, like, I don't know. I think, like, you know, Yuda and Petty can know that Carl Anthony Towns is going to get an extra three minutes because of the matchup. And it's all these other factors and blah, blah, blah. I don't know if you're going to know that about golfers. Golfer, yeah. People seem to think that they do. Like this is a, this is a course that plays fast. So you want I don't even know what what it would be. Um, you want but but the, let's let's say all those things are true. Like, but they don't. Do they matter anymore now that you got you know these guys making good projections? Not just not just Rufus, but you know they're definitely more sophisticated on all the sites than they were six five six years ago. Yeah. So like, I don't know. You're just fat. You're just double factoring into something that's already factored into the projections. Right. Um, so I have, a, I have a, you know, several questions here, but I want to throw it to the audience since we are past an hour already. If people have questions for Brian that you would like answered, feel free to throw them in chat. Uh, but one, one that I I've, I've started asking more and more, cause I really enjoy it is the uh, DFS Mount Rushmore. Do you have uh, thoughts on, who is on the DFS Mount Rushmore? Okay, yeah. How many names does that Mount Mount Rushmore? That'd be four, four. four. But um, the, we, we've we've established that the Burrito Brothers just count as one because everybody throws, okay. wants to throw both on there, so we're just counting them as one. Fair enough. That they should be on there. Uh, you got to throw you on there. Now the question is: Do you put any of the old school guys on there? See, it's personal preference. My thought is no, but maybe maybe that's yeah. totally wrong. Like the, you know, that's the actual Mount Rushmore is like a span of time. So you know, maybe yeah. Condia was so great. Um, I don't are know. they like? Are they like Babe Ruth? Are they like you know One Eyed right. Willie? You know, right. who probably wouldn't you know have been good except he played in eighteen seventy two. You know, um, right. So, oh god, that that's kind of tough. I think I think you got to throw Alex on there, right? Yeah. And he, Alex, you know, with stochastic too, was you know influential, you know, very influential True. in the development of of DFS. Um, and then probably parlay picker would have to be number four. <laughs> he, he was also very influential in his own way. <laughs> um, I don't know who's four. Who's four? Yeah, I don't know who 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 do you have who who would you suggest at four? There? Obviously, brick seventy five. You got to throw oh, brick seventy five. Unfortunately, I think you have to at least win a milli. <laughs> to uh, I don't. I mean, if you do have the most six figure wins without winning a milli, I feel like that's. that's a no you know who should be there. on there? Whoever makes it out of this new paradigm. That's what I'll say. So whoever is the 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 winner of the sim wars and. Uh, even if, even if I'm going to say a lot of its variants, uh, you still win, you got the money, whoever makes it out of this next one, even if they're old school who didn't make the list or if they're new, uh, you'll, you'll be number four. So we'll say, we'll, 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 we'll just carve a me. blank face Yeah, I like. and that. then we'll fill it in carve two it years later. from now. All right. That's fair. Uh, not EOM wants to know what you did for the government. If you uh, are willing to talk about it. Oh, I was an assassin. He was an assassin for the government. Yeah. Um, I worked for Hillary Clinton. Uh, no, uh, I uh, was. Uh, I worked for a political consulting company where they did consulting and fundraising, and then in the city, and then I worked at the Department of Employment Security as a legislative liaison at the Capitol, working okay. on legislation, and then I uh, worked at the. Uh, Illinois treasurer's office also on the legislative team. And then I quit. Okay. Um, so we, we keep talking about the end coming for DFS. So, so I got how close do you think we are? And like, so for me, I feel like I've transitioned a lot of my volume and interest over to like underdog or even like pick six, like th- these new types of games where I'm like, Oh, well, this is like early stage DFS. Like people are playing this all wrong. I'm going to do this instead. Uh, at what point do you make that decision? Is it like, what, what are you tracking to make the decision of, okay, I need to switch over to something else. And, and would you ever consider like, you know, these, uh, the eliminator on underdog, the obviously best ball, I know you're, you're doing tools and stuff. So that's like, you have interest in it in that sense, but, uh, have, yeah. have you ever given any thought to like, Hey, maybe I should be getting 
putting more money into these games that are unsolved or you know further from being solved uh rather than dfs and what are you looking at to make that kind of decision right right yeah definitely the problem is my motivation is not high so i should be and people who do that are you know smart but i see that like for me like it's more like a bonus hunter mentality like looking for all the small little edges yeah and like i just don't want to be that kind of old school ap kind of advantage player going around the casinos looking for you know every you know oh there's a new promotion on sundays i have to go and be there at six in the morning to get my you know 2.7 percent roi i just i don't know like i just want to um and it's hard it's hard going back words you know like price pool wise yeah true you know it's like oh i gotta win 150 of these pick sixes and then i'll be even <laughs> I listen to young, dumb, naive Neil sometimes. I, I had interviews where I said, like, yeah, I don't really play any contests where you can't win more than $50,000. And now I'm like $2,000 I'm having these contests. Chase. So I, I have moved back in stakes and hasn't been as painful as I thought it would be moving back in stakes. Um, but I also, I, I also think it's probably harder for you because you do have such an advanced process. That it's got to be like you've invested the time. You have a better process than like everybody else. So that uh, has to be well, a little bit tougher. Yeah, and that's kind of always been my what I perceive to be my edge, anyways, is putting in some sort of process. And like, do I really want to sit here and come up with a new complete process for pick six, you know, and stuff like that? The and then the sports betting is like I got banned like two months into sports betting when they first got legalized here, you know, on 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 two sites. So did you really that quick? Yeah. And it's like, I don't want to do that. And I, and I don't want to do this bearding stuff, you know, like uh, there's no way I want to trust a run a company basically, you know, finding accounts to bet on and then having to trust them. And, and like, and that just sounds like management, you know, like I would, I would be a beard. Like I would like, you know, if, if they wanted to use my account, I mean, yeah, hell yeah. But, the other way around sounds like super unpleasant. Yeah. Um, yeah. Just the whole sports and betting is like not entertaining me. Although I still sports bet. Like I'm like, I'm having buddies over for, you know, sweet 16. Uh, I'm not 16, the, the, the start of the tournament anyways. Yeah, yeah. Four. And we are definitely going to bet. And I will, you know, probably get the worst of it on almost every bet, but I don't care. You know, it's entertainment. Right. Um, I just bet money. I can, you know, afford to lose. And then we go and drink and watch it, and it's it's fun, you know. All this this like like Bob Volgaris. I don't know if you follow him on Twitter, and he's going on this anti gambling tirade. For- yeah, that kind of surprised me. I thought he was uh, I thought he was really into the gambling space. Well, he is. He's a professional professional gambler, but okay, that's what I thought. Yeah, he just he he thinks it's going to have like an outsized weight on the American public. The negative you know, impact. And I know there's something that you're very concerned with too. Just uh, <laughs> well, degeneracy of, uh, of young Americans. I, I mean, I, I, I've got tons of thoughts on it, but like, I mean, coming from the professional gamblers, like, I just think they should be focusing on helping gamblers because like, who doesn't know that there's problem gambling is a thing, right? Right. Like who doesn't fucking know that? And like there's there's you know, call one eight hundred gambler stuff everywhere. Um now if he wants, you know, the whole thing banned or something, that's completely different. But like the point I make all the time, there's two main ones is one, first of all, gambling is clearly, I think I'm right about this, it's just an entertainment product. That's it. Yeah. It's gambling is for entertainment. And like these these guys and then the other one is um when i i started looking into the uh the gambling addiction rates like it takes you like literally 6 seconds to google them and and like the studies across countries over time decades and you know various nations are all pretty exa- static and similar and and i thought very low so, like, if I thought 
if you would ask me like how many, you know, what percentage of people get addicted to gambling, I'm like, I don't know, 8%, 10%. I don't know. Right. And then if you would ask the public what percentage of people who gamble, you know, get addicted to gambling, they would say 30% or 50%. Right. I guarantee it. I've never looked that one up, but I bet if there's been a pew pew poll, it would be super high. And it's like between 0.6% and like 2%. Like and I'm, I imagine the variation is because they they have different definitions of what problem yeah. gambling is. Right. But it was like, I, I don't know, to me, that's shockingly low and very like uh, equal with a lot of other like addictions and addictions of habit and addictions of hobbies and, you know, kleptomania and just over and over and all these other things. And it's got this huge outsized weight from the public because it's gambling and it's just seen as this degenerate horrible thing and it very well may be but it is just entertainment right and and all these other industries that we don't have this huge legislative reaction to you know like like kleptomania you don't just put like okay you have to be 21 to go and buy sh you know clothes now anymore you know do you have a hotline for for kleptomaniacs in in, right. in stores and and i said this on davis's patreon too it's like well here and here's the problem with this being in politics is the this type of thing is perfect for politics because you could shame people and it's very easy as a as a you, what you want to give a legislator is really just one talking point because they can't handle anymore. They don't know what the fuck's going on. They don't know anything really. There's no fundraising, and then you give them one talking point. And so if you could tell them gambling addiction, they can stick with that. They could stick on script with that. They could moral get the moral high ground. And like now, what do I sound like? An asshole, an you know uncompassionate asshole. Who doesn't care about gambling addiction? Right. But I do just as much as everyone else. Like you're not, you're not righteous. Like no right. one wants bad things to happen to good people, right? You're not special, right? I I don't either. But I was shocked by how low these numbers were. Doesn't mean it's right. not bad when it happened. Yeah. And More clearly, two percent that no it one, applies to. No one's denying it doesn't happen. Right. It's just and then and then what? But so like now back to what I was saying on Davis is like, is like. Have you like you know the 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 like the uh, Bob Saget when he was on Chappelle's movie? Uh, yes. Have you ever sucked dick for marijuana? Yeah. <laughs> right when Chappelle was then at A and A A for marijuana and he Bob Saget's making fun of him. Yeah. It's like has anyone sucked dick for a bat? <laughs> you know what <laughs> I mean? Like I'm I'm sure it's probably happened at once yeah. in a million, but like it's not fucking it's not heroin. Right. It's not crack. <laughs> yeah. And but then if you say that, like, oh my God, my uncle lost all his money. It's like, but like honestly, that's the bad thing that happens is like people lose money. That sucks. Don't get me wrong, especially if they have kids. It's bad. I don't want to sound ink, but it's yeah. not like it's they're not like dead from an overdose. And uh, as uh, Nadia UM points out, drinking is completely normalized and highly promoted everywhere. Probably much worse. As I'm, of course, drinking air right. out of my Lowell's, Lowell's glass. Got to show up yeah. the Lowell's glass. And I'm not even making like, you know, a, like a liberty case. You know, like Neil should be able to do whatever he wants with those beers. He's an adult and he can put whatever he wants in his body. You know what I mean? That's a, that's a completely separate argument, a yeah. separate moral argument. I'm just, I'm just saying like objectively, those numbers are very low compared to a whole bunch of other things that we don't think about. And then, right. and then, you know, I, my example is like, it's like going to a movie and half the audience is going to come out with double their movie ticket. That's what a sports yeah. bet is. Right. You are, you're Yeah, that's true. slightly that's less than half the, the audience time. comes out with double their money, you know? Um, so like, that's just entertainment with the little lottery attached to it. It's like watching a movie with a little, with a little sweat. Now you yeah. might say that's totally disgusting and immoral and it shouldn't exist. And, but fine, fair enough. Ban the whole thing. I'm not saying it's not immoral or it's moral or whatever. I'm just saying like, it's pretty shocking and consistent how low these, and like, you know, they're like, Oh, but well, it's new in America. Well, it's not new in England. It's been around forever. Right. It's, been going on forever. It's, been, yeah. it's been around forever in a lot of countries. And, yeah. but the, the numbers 
still show pretty consistently what it is across cultures. Now, if you want to ban credit cards on gambling sites and all stuff, fine. I don't care. Whatever. Go ahead. Do, do your stuff. But like from a betters angle, like if Bob has any influence, which I don't think he really does, you know, he's, he's popular, but he doesn't have any political power. You know, he doesn't have right. any, you know, or maybe he does, maybe he knows people. I don't know, but it, he should be like, we should be like, in my opinion, trying to protect players. Not just this tiny, you know, tiny might be a little, you know, but it's very small percentage of the population that could be affected with this problem game. Here's another thing, too, is there's probably a lot of overlap with problem gambling in other addictions. Right. Oh, for sure. And, I, there is. and if you just got rid of the whole industry, a big percentage of that cohort is just going to be addicted to something else, probably even yeah. worse. Right. Yeah. So, like, um, um, what I, I would say is like these guys, like Captain Jack and Rufus and and Bob and all these guys who are like concerned about problem gambling, is like why wouldn't we combine our efforts to protect players and you know spend money on like you know maybe we maybe we could do something about players getting limited or banned from you know, winning players getting banned or not, or not getting their bets paid out or, you know, uh, working, working the legislative angle from the players right. side at these places, opposed to just drafting totally dominating the legislative era. And, the, uh, and then again, when you talk about these, 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 uh, you know, gamblers who are, you know, against gambling or against problem gambling, you're just, I'm telling you, having worked there, you're just giving fuel to the to the sports books and the ga- in the casinos to use themselves to wedge off competition. They yeah. will gladly pay an extra hundred thousand dollars a year in advertising and a phone line in the casino that no one ever uses, so that they can mow off competition from an upstart coming up, or even get them banned, like underdog or something. Right. You know. Yeah, I mean. If- I'm, so, I'm clearly on on your side on this. So, um, yeah, it's it'd be uh, probably better if, if I had a, a, the opposing viewpoint from you on on this topic. But um, yeah, Casey says preach, Brian. <laughs> I mean, um, yeah, I think most of the audience here is probably on on the same page as you. Who knows? Maybe I don't see anybody disagreeing. Yeah, but um, I, I mean, we don't have to talk about it anymore. I mean, it's just, I, I mean, I don't get it. I don't know what. Like, well, actually, I think I do get it. I think because it feels really good. It feels real good to go like, oh, bad bad things happen to good people, and I don't like that, and I want to be right. against that. I think that's yeah. just yeah. Of course, you feel good, but everyone fucking thinks that, right? No one wants bad things to happen to good people. Yeah, congrat. Pat yourself on the black back. Okay, I'm sorry. Next topic. No, yeah, that was good. I just um, we, we do have a couple other questions to get to, so figured I should move it to uh, Del Cote asked. You stopped playing the tiers format some years ago. Was it for lack of time, or the smaller prize pools weren't worth your time anymore? Yeah, I, I never really put a ton of effort into that. I did the one before that a decent amount. What was it called, Neil? Do you remember they before had that little tiers? six? It was like you pick six players. Pick six. Was it pick six? No, it's not pick six. Uh, um, you pick six oh, players. What was it called? There was a well, little format that was six that I just put some effort into. Del Cote says pick them. Was it pick them? I mean, it was just, it was DFS. It was just a smaller, um, it was a smaller, uh, you, you didn't have as many players you could, you could uh, put on a roster and they would do like a short, shorter slate. Anyways, I put, I like those. I played those a, a decent amount, but they, they stopped doing them. Um, okay. We had a lot of, a lot of commentary. It's a lot of people agreeing with, with your, your points uh, in chat, obviously. Oh, I wanted to ask you about this. Uh, Ryan says, Rick will do anything to avoid going back to construction. Did you work construction? I did. I did briefly. Yeah. Yeah. My buddy's dad owned a construction company and uh, gave us a job. It sucked. It sucked. You know, it would probably be, <laughs> it's not, I'm, I'm, I'm probably too old now, but yeah, it would it, it'd definitely be a rewarding job though. Yeah. Now that I think about it. It's hard I, when you're younger, you know, it's hard to wrap your head around reality arcade that's it ryan i think you're right yeah arcade okay 
Um, my dad owned a remodeling company, so I also did some construction in in like my high school years. Um, and yeah, that would it was be kind more, of rewarding. Yeah, I'd but, rather uh, build from the ground up than remodel. You got to do some uh, demolition, which is kind of fun sometimes. Oh, okay. So like there there were aspects of it, but I was mostly um, like just like the construction bitch. Like I was mostly like moving yeah. heavy objects from one spot to another. I didn't do anything that like required yeah. any kind of. I was actually uh, on our on the company's tax forms, my, I was an unskilled laborer was, was my, <laughs> my role in the company. Um, so yeah, we, yeah, yeah. Kind of a, lot of, a lot, a lot of hard thinking there. Um, all right. What else? Uh, maybe that is all, maybe everybody was just commenting. I thought we were getting a lot of questions, but it was mostly just commentary on, uh, on this, this topic that, uh, you're obviously very passionate about it and you've, you've talked about it, you know, on, on lulls before. Um, so I, you know, I've heard it before. Maybe I guess maybe other people haven't haven't heard uh, your takes on that. But I, I had some other other questions that I was interested in hearing your thoughts on. Um, so you say you're not interested in these like little games, like uh, moving over to to some of the games that I'm interested on. On like Underdog, what do you think would what do you think you are interested in doing next? I know you've already started like building some tools on brick75.com. Like, is that what is next for you? Like, do you think that you have that kind of entrepreneurial spirit where you might just keep building things out or what are you thinking? Yeah, I don't know. That's a good question. Um, or also what about content? I guess. I mean, you, you've obviously Lowell's has been very successful. You've, you've been a uh, regular on Davis's podcast. I feel like you seems like you kind of enjoy doing content. Is that, a, I guess a, a secondary question. What, what, what do you think? What, what are your, where are your interests? Actually, as, uh, I mean, I didn't even think about it until you said that. I would rather probably do content. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but just, I don't, I mean, I don't know. The problem, my audience isn't huge. And um, you kind of need, you kind of need a pretty damn big audience to make enough money to like, yeah, you know, like to make it worth your while, unless you're just doing it for fun, you know, which is basically what I do now. So, um, I don't know. And then also I like, it wouldn't just be DFS, obviously. Like yeah. I like talking about a lot of different things. So like, I don't know. I don't even know if my, my audience, which isn't huge would care a ton, you know? Um, if you did like non DFS content. Yeah. Like it, it wouldn't just, it would, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm me. So I would obviously still talk about gambling and stuff, right. you know, I couldn't help it, but like, uh, yeah, like politics and, philosophy and gambling and just like and like even like me davis talk about movies and star wars and stuff right. like that you know so like i don't know um that would definitely be more fun and 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 something i'd be i'd be interested in um i do i do like underdog though you know like i like the i like what they've accomplished so far and the format's cool and so um you know, building a tool over there is just fun. You know, it's a, I don't, I don't make, I'm definitely down money on it. <laughs> oh, really? I'm yeah. Is that partially because they shut it down as soon as, as soon as you created one of those tools? Like I remember last year I downloaded it and then like before I even installed it, it was like, Oh, underdog is nixing this. <laughs> yeah. It didn't even, it did. It didn't last super long on underdog. I mean, they allowed, they allowed the, they allowed like half the way, you know, like it'll, it'll queue up a player for you. Um, but you have to, right. uh, you know, it won't pick it for you. So it's, it's, cl it's pretty close. Um, uh, but like all the stats overlays and stuff like that is more like poker. So like, that's what I put on there last year. And now I got a whole bunch more stats on your opponents because they publicly released them. So yeah, just, and then I made up some of my own, my own metrics and stuff that I think might be useful, you know, using R and, um, and that should be out tomorrow, hopefully. But well, you, uh, you and Pete kind of showed that on Lowell's this past week, right? That that's, yeah, uh, I was hoping it would be ready for that show. Like we were planning that show around that, but um, it's just it hasn't been finished yet. And uh, I mean, that's like the cool. I think the cool thing about Underdog is you know you're you're an underdog. I could see getting pissed at people, right? We we're talking about the difference between poker and DFS. Somebody snipes you like fuck, for no reason. Oh. 
I know. <laughs> yeah, I, like I, there have been times where I've been like, "Fuck!" Is it like I, I, I was wondering if if somebody already has that kind of tool where it's like, does this person know who I like? Because they just drafted the player that I wanted like thirty spots ahead of ADP, you know. So I, I've kind of wondered, like, do they just like do they have tools that are telling them who the next guy up likes that kind of that kind of thing? And yeah, it's easy to get pissed in those rooms, right? And so that's why I added the stuff this year is that kind of scenario where you're on the turn and it's like, Oh, should I wait on this guy? Well, now at least you have some data and you could be like, you know, you could show whether this guy takes quarterbacks early running backs early, if they are, if they like value or if they, if they usually pick after, which is huge. If you got a guy who's sitting there, you know, who's going to be value and you know, they, they just always take the value guy. You got to yeah. take him now before the turn. And then, yeah, you know, it's just hundred. And then who, who knows? Usually what happens is, you know, people take take the data to their own, you know, make up their own strategies, you know, on, on like what they want to overlay or how they want to use the information. You never know. So um, that I mean, I do I do enjoy that. I don't I don't like so there was 151, 150 maxers okay. last year. So I figure my market cap is probably somewhere under that number, right? Sure. Something like that. Non 150 maxes we use it. I, yeah, I, only, well, I made 120, but I don't know how many people are like me who like came close but didn't get to 150. But you gotta figure most of the 150ers won't want it, you know, just whatever. True. And then add back in a bunch of people who aren't 150 and who do want it, but it's still probably right. around there. True. Is and that's probably not a big enough user base to make a business out of. Yeah. Um but the, the original idea was to overlay projections on sports betting. So you could just leverage all your tools you paid for for DFS already, you know, your stochastics sub, and just go right to the b- betting page and go, oh, Alex has LeBron James at 32 points and he's only at 28 over, you know, just, you know, just highlights the, the bets where you can, you know, because the whole point of that sports betting is like to spend a little time. Little time as possible, picking off the easiest lines right. and not getting banned, hopefully. Yeah. But like clearly, they're they're super recreational and they will ban you. And if they don't, it's just because you're not winning or they you got lucky or I imagine some people get preferential to your treatment. You know, I imagine some of them are like, let's not ban this one yet. Right. Probably. Um, we, we got the same question twice here, so I want to ask. And, and I already had Pete on this on this show, so we I kind of talked about it with Pete. But uh, Jewish McCaffrey asks, "Sorry, late to the party. Ignore this if you already mentioned it." But how did he initially meet Pete Overzet? Michelle also asks, uh, "What made you reach out to Pete specifically? You guys have great chemistry. Just curious." So yeah, how, tell me about that a little bit. Um, so I did uh, my first video on still on my site. My most viewed video, actually, too. On your YouTube page? On my YouTube page, yeah. So Lulz, for people who don't know, was on my YouTube page originally. Um, uh, and when I recorded, I bet you have the same experience, Neil. Uh, when I recorded my first video, I was like a deer in headlights. You know? Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's so awkward. It like, is this so is awkward. so easy. You know, like a, a person. I could, do, I could do people. But when I was, like, looking at my camera right now, this dark, like, soulless eye you know and and i probably did like 20 takes and you know who i dm i dm josh uh because josh josh, yeah this was a long time ago but josh was kind of the original uh uh you know vi- guy making videos in tfs he was one of the og yeah. video guys and i'm like dude i am the worst <laughs> i am the worst most awkward uh video maker he's like dude everyone does that their first time he goes you get you just get used to it and you eventually don't care and um i'm still i'm still not perfect but i'm definitely a lot more comfortable you seem very comfortable in front of the camera like i i don't know i I, i'm i'm never like worried that you're going to be nervous as as a guest like if if you seem as comfortable as anybody in front of a camera yeah now i mean I, i was a little and then i did a uh a stochastic show when they first started it was you know osmo back then yeah. And um and I thought like oh my god, I'm going to have Alex had like 12,000 followers back then on Twitter and I'm like oh, I'm going to have 10,000 by, you know, the end of the month. By the end of the show. <laughs> yeah. yeah. 
Like I'm gonna. <laughs> it turns out it's a lot harder to get people to follow you than than I thought. Not that I really try very super hard at it, yeah. but I thought it was like, oh, these guys, these DFS guys have this many, so I should have that many. Isn't that yeah. how this works? Right. Um. Uh. So, so after I did some videos, um, I was it was really NBA DFS after live before lock or whatever would go off. I'd be sitting here because I have to, you know, doing my lineups. And I was like, man, I wish they would go an extra hour. Somebody would have a DFS show during NBA after the NBA because I'd watch it, every, you know, to pass the time. And they could go, you know, have an interesting conversation and then go like, oh, by the way, you know, Giannis just got ruled out. And I'm like, oh, okay. shit, thank you. You know, because I don't have to refresh, uh, you know, the fan back then it was Fantasy Thanks Labs so much, Twitter yeah. all the time. And, uh, and I was like, well, why don't I do something like that? You know, it's like, well, then I, I mean, and then I, so I wanted to do it a little later. So I wouldn't interfact, you know, interfere mm -hmm. with my lineups that much. And, uh, but like, uh, like, again, my first video was so awkward. I'm like, I can't, I don't think I could do this myself. <laughs> like, I don't think hosting's hard, you know, it is. Yeah. It's, it's not easy. Um, it's easy to be this guy, you know, the guy who just could just rant and then, all right, back to you, make it entertaining again, you know, yeah. or it's, ask, ask the right questions, you know? And I saw Pete do his bankroll challenge videos on rotor grinders. Pete was that road. I think we talked about that. I, I never saw Pete at rotor grinder. So I, I forget that he was there. Yeah. He had a back row challenge. I don't remember what it was called. Uh, but like on Mondays he would review his like single entry lineup. And uh, I didn't even watch Swolecast. So, like, even if he was either. on Swolecast that time, I didn't even know. And I didn't know anything about the man stuff. Uh, I just watched those bankroll videos, and I thought he was hilarious. Like, yeah, uh, he was also um, – he was funny, but he was also um, self-deprecating. Yeah. But, like, in a, a good way. You know what right. I mean? Not, Not like, like constantly, like, like – Right, constantly, like, a, like yeah. a little bitch, you know? Yeah, <laughs> like right. like where a girl would be like, ew, get away from me. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, you know, like you can't you can't overdo that stuff. But so, like, he was humble and and clearly and clearly funny, and he was hosting his own – and it was just him. Yeah, yeah. And so I'm like, okay, perfect. And then I thought – I'm like, well, this would be a good angle. I would be the guy, you know, who has, you know, the expertise or whatever. Yeah. And he would be the guy who hosts and is funny and, 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 you know, he could even learn from me maybe, you know, or whatever. Like it was, I don't know. I just thought that that would work really, really well. Um, and he wasn't doing like a ton of content at that time. Really? Yeah. No, he wasn't doing a ton. I'm not even sure who's on Swolecast. Um, he told me like Evan Silva was on it at that point. He, he was, uh, he replaced it, Evan Silva. Evan might have still been there. That I'm not even sure. How no, I think he did. I think he did get swellcast before we started Walls. And um uh so, but anyways, he had a real job. So so I was I, I just I just DM'd him like, hey, random question. He and he followed me. He followed okay. me on Twitter. So I'm yeah. like, he must watch my videos or something. Yeah. Um so I was like, hey, random, random idea. Would you have any interest in doing you know the show I just described? In, in a DM and yeah, he said, no, he said, no, he was going on vacation or something. And I, I, you know, I figured he's probably not. He was about know, to be going who, who to, I, uh, to, yeah. to some random guy. Why would he want to do a show with me? Um, but yeah, the, then, then um, when COVID kind of happened, like, I guess his, his uh, vacation got canceled and he was like, you know what? Well, what the hell let's do it. Let's do it, do the show. And then, and then, uh, we I hired a um I was gonna do the show myself. We were gonna do Lowell's by yourself. That's I was gonna do Lowell's by well, we didn't have a name for it when we first started. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I was planning on doing the show myself, so I hired a producer. And then when Pete said he wanted to do it, and he's like, but I don't want to produce it. And I'm like, actually, I already have a producer. This is perfect. Like We'll do it. And I eventually, when Pete decided he wanted to do the producing himself because StreamYards was so easy, yeah. I had to like let that guy go, and that became awkward too. Like, yeah. oh my god, I just want to do a stupid podcast. I don't want to have any drama. <laughs> yeah, more than you signed up for. Right. Yeah. 
So it's funny. Yeah. Pete and I talked about this. So getting it from from both of your perspectives is is kind of funny here in the the introductory. And there there are no major inconsistencies, I would say. Um, yeah. No. Uh, well, yeah. Not I, I was trying to think of a joke there, like for for a minute, but then I'm I'm just I, I couldn't come up with a, a joke right there for a major inconsistency. <laughs> you know, uh, I I watched that show. There was one thing I dis not disagreed with, but like probably more co commentary on. And when you asked him about, like he, you know. He was, you know, how like it's like a show with like you know the drama and the damn gambling yeah, and yeah. space. I feel like the coolest thing about it for us, at least from my perspective, is we can actually talk about whatever we want. That is true. Like you guys don't stick to the, the topic, right? Yeah, of we the day always like it'll be like here's the intro, two lols, and then it's like that's not even you talk about. You usually cover all the topics, but like talk about a lot more than just what you say you're going to. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And like maybe we'll maybe we're going to talk about best ball. Maybe we're Maybe we will talk about drama and those, those can be fun and interesting and stuff, you know? Um, but like, yeah, I think that's the coolest part about it is we could, cause like, like the swole cast, they have that joke, you know, like that they never end up talking about the plays and stuff yeah. like that. I know it's a bit on there, but like no one expects us to at all. You know no. what I mean? Like, and, and that's, and that's what gets views in DFS is like the picks, the plays. show me who, Right. And and we don't do that at all. And still people apparently at least a decent amount of people still like it. And so I think I think that's the coolest thing. You know, what's funny is so I prior to that, as I was thinking about the show, talking with Pete, I had this thought of like, you know, what really makes Lois work is that it's not is that Pete is also sharp. He's not just a funny guy. Brian's also funny. He's not just a sharp guy. And I thought that I just had that thought as I was thinking about that episode. And then uh, like yesterday, I rewatched our episode the one that you and i recorded for high stakes i rewatched that i hate rewatching my episodes but i did it uh in preparation for this and i said the exact same thing i was like i thought that this was an original thought that i just had like prior to the pete interview and apparently it's it's something that i've thought for a long time that part of what makes it work is pete is also very sharp he's a great host um and, and you're also very funny so i think it's uh well, thank you yeah, a lot of us a lot of us love the show um uh the consigliere sent me a super chat uh, <laughs> Sorry for being like PS your camera. I literally I read this and I like for a second like was like oh shit what and then I and then I understood the joke. It took uh, it took you. me a second. Not gonna lie, I was like yeah. oh is it me or oh, wait no he's doing a bit. Yeah, uh, that was good. Um, all right. Uh, oh, I wanted to tell you a story about that. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I was at a bar here in the city, uh, whatever seven years ago, and my brother. This is about looking like me. And my brother with my brother and some of our friends and and they're like oh, Brian come over oh my god come on the other side of the we're we're you know we're hammered this is probably two in the morning and there's a dude who looks exactly like you I'm like really holy shit go around to the other side of the bar turn the corner the dude looks exactly like me even more than you way more than you and I was like oh my god <laughs> you look exactly like me and the guy looks at me and he's like like angry <laughs> really <laughs> I was like, oh my god this guy sees what i look like and it angers him oh, that we look alike and he's like realizing he's ugly or something <laughs> oh that's so it was good. one of the worst experiences and i'm like hey yeah okay never mind you know we don't look alike i guess sorry pal like i thought he was gonna fight me because we looked alike and he's realizing how bad he looks do you do you get people all the time telling you that you have doppelgangers? Because I get it constantly. People are like, I just saw a guy at a bar who looked exactly like you. Like I get that so frequently from like friends and family. They see people who look like me. Uh God. you don't you don't get it? I, I so it's not just a beard glasses hat thing. Like I, I just assume that it's beard glasses hat. Is, is it it like might me? be. I probably just don't go out in the world enough. But like oh, yeah. I also like I didn't wear glasses for a long time and okay. I didn't have a beard for a long time and shaved my head and, you know, like, and, and I was skinny, skinny, you know, growing up, you know, I didn't have any muscles or anything. So right. I've looked different over, my, over the years. Me too. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. But re recently, like within the past couple of years, I get it all the time. Like saw this guy who looks exactly like you and yeah. Like, yeah. Well, I mean, you know, the, like the meme, like the meme of the guy who's like, He's got his like pointing and like that looks like us. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. It's, it's, yeah. We, it's we like the liberal like guy. It's like the liberal yeah. guy. Like that is exactly what we look like. I'm like, yeah. oh my god, I'm the liberal guy in 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 real life. Yeah, that's we do we do kind of we all do kind of look alike. Yeah. Um, 
Ryan asked, are you going to start attacking PGA showdowns? That does seem like the one form of PGA where, it, where there is probably edge. All, all the sharp DFS players I know seem to think there's edge in, DF, in right. the PGA showdown. You know, I probably should have. Yeah. Uh, I stopped playing those. I thought they were getting more lottery, but like I didn't really look into it. I don't think I looked into it close enough. It sounds like you could still, you still might be able to win at those. Might even be worth just playing those and not the full slate. I don't know. I really love the PGA layout for DFS. Um, you love the the sweat after. Yeah, I like the Friday. four days. I, I like all the structures. I like the showdown. And back before they switched, the weekend was fun too. Now they do a weekend, but it's really small because they also have a showdown on Saturday. And then the final, the final day is a completely different format with points counting and stuff like that. I don't know. I, I thought that the whole PJ product was really good on DraftKings. It's just this the 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 tons of variance in DFS, and then PJ DFS is even worse. Yeah. And then their big their big player pools, just like NFL, which makes it even worse. Yeah. So you could just you could just lose a ton at PGA for a long time, even though you're plus EV. Yeah, I, I don't know that I'm I don't know that I'm plus EV, but I do know that it's a straight downward arrow for me. Looking at my my PGA chart is just it, I still love it. I, I agree with you. It is really fun, even though I'm not really a golf fan, and I like don't really think that I know what I'm doing with PGA. I've started using using Sims more, so I think that that helps, like giving me an idea of what a good lineup is. You know, and obviously I know like you play like the the leverage game, you play or the the ownership game in PGA um, to some extent. So I don't think that I'm playing as poorly as my chart shows, but um, yeah, it's definitely been a bad chart for me. But yeah, still still a lot of fun. Um, all right, we are we are getting toward the end. I usually I try to keep these you know not much longer than than two hours at the most, and we are almost at two hours already. Um, but I did have a couple more questions uh that i had oh yeah i wanted to just uh briefly hear your thoughts on no late swap for nba this is this thing that uh DraftKings has been testing out do, do you have thoughts on no late swap is it something that you enjoy do you hate it because it kills your edge what, what do you think of no late swap yeah i think um it definitely hurts any edge i you know i have um i kind of like I would probably take it though. I would probably take just no late swap if they're like if they had me push a button, and I could only either do one or the other. But this new strategy they have of just Fridays, kind of like it. Yeah. I kind of do too. I, I wouldn't just mind like just Friday week. and Saturday. Just yeah, Friday when, you, Saturday when most people have plans in the evening. Yeah. Um, Ricky got mad at me last week when I when I didn't mention <laughs> say hello to him. So good to see you. Uh, our fresh Ricky week long is a Ponzi. Hundred percent agree. Um, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I like that. Can say Larry, yeah, you did just kind of ugly. You did just kind of call me ugly, didn't you? Um, that's that's fair. I no, I, we, we I, talked about how handsome we are on, on Twitter. Well, you called right. yourself ugly, so there, therefore, no, um, I'm saying that guy thought we were yeah, we were yeah, ugly, yeah. you know. I think we're beautiful, I do too. I think we're, we're the handsomest men in DFS personally. Um, any exciting new tools coming out on brick75.com? No, well, just the update to the to the draft caddy. Where you could see your opponent's uh, your opponent's data um, should hopefully be out tomorrow or the day after. Okay. Yeah. Um, and it might and and underdog might let us do full auto this year too. I talked to them. Oh, cool. Um, they haven't let me know yet. They probably I don't know if people bitch enough. They probably won't. But it's funny. I so I downloaded the tool and thought like. I actually don't know if I want to if I want to do full auto. I might actually like the tool better the way they like force you to do it, where it's like, here's what I suggest, but you make the decision. Because I do kind of enjoy the process of like, especially because I've, I've been trying to treadmill a lot more recently, like joining the, the cardio club, and it like distracts you doing a draft while you're on a treadmill. Um, so I don't know. I don't know. To well, all three options happens. will be available if they add that right. eventually. So okay. you don't have to do it at all. It just has stats and your opponent's stats. Yeah. Or you could do just suggestion or then full auto if they eventually allow that really the unfortunate thing is you're going to bring in more dfs pros i bet if you if you use this will be people and like yeah i'll get more action down if i don't have to do all the work of 150 drafts like it's going to be right uh, people who wouldn't play like sharks who would not play 
best ball are now going to be like, yeah, screw it. So, so actually, so maybe, I mean, you say your market cap is probably under that 151, uh, 150 maxers, but maybe, maybe you'll bring in some of those DFS pros and people who wouldn't otherwise play just like, like that's who you want to market to just people who have money, want to gamble a little bit, have, have something on the line, but don't want to spend the time. Maybe it's not the, the current best ballers. Um, yeah, is a, is a thought at least. Right. I think just broadly speaking, it's like heavy volume people because it, yeah. you don't even need most of the, I would say 90% of the people who use the app don't use any auto stuff. They just use it for the overlay and the stats. Um, I'm going to put, I'm going to put that on there this year too. I'm going to have, a, I'm going to make a little algorithm of a like prediction of um like, like ownership kind of product, you know, like for DFS, but like w- how likely are the late round guys likely to get drafted yeah 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 and it's I, I mean it sounds like they might actually give us actual ownership this year um we'll maybe see, we'll see if that happens yeah we'll see which which i guess in a way that would make and maybe pete said this maybe this is a conversation you guys had that the like the idea of then drafting later is going to be more of an edge because you're gonna know how much a player is owned i don't know that's uh yeah yeah i think that that makes sense like if you draft early what are the options <laughs> thank, thank, thank you, Sarah. Um, yeah. what, what are the what are the options? Like, the the option is you get you get a guy who's you drafted too early, or you get a guy you who you get value on, or you get a guy who um, isn't drafted much, which is good. You don't want him drafted much, but he's you know yeah. still plays. But that drafted much would be much more useful at the end of the cycle than the beginning because you'll know way more likely whether he's going to be 70 percent of lineups f- the field or 30 percent of the field you don't know that early on and early on the guy might not even have an adp by the end of the off season right yeah. so that's two big strikes against you yeah yeah something to think about for those of us who were addicted to just drafting immediately and throughout the summer maybe maybe it makes some sense to uh to hold off some of those drafts for when you have the information edge um you mentioned uh so this is a couple of years ago when we did the high stakes interview you said that you thought your your the, the sport where you have the biggest edge was mlb is that is that still the case um last year i barely won an mlb so We'll see what happens this year. I mean, I I mean, I won like a couple. I think a couple hundred hundred in MLB last year. So I'm gonna play again though. Um, the 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 big problem with MLB is sims are perfect for MLB, which was probably why my edge was what it was. True. Assuming they don't jam everybody, like force everybody to the same types of lineups. Like, oh well, we have. The Braves at twenty percent ownership in cool cores, and they should be thirty percent. So we're going to give everybody the Braves, and suddenly they're fifty percent owned. Um, assuming yeah. that there's a way to account for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, but I, I mean, I think the main thing is people just put in better lineups, mm-hmm. and and like that kind of thing doesn't really happen that much. And like they, a lot of times, bros will not put in, you know, the Oreos at one percent ownership when they should be putting in a decent amount of or and now the sims gonna be like hey it's shoving it in your face you know oreos when it would never have happened and but so, will they if, if they don't have since they don't have any kind of portfolio management mechanism within the sims right now like do, do you think they're going to or, or do you think you'll be able to see what the sims give people and the, the, the that's what i'm saying is this sims and mlb clearly tell you a good strategy okay and there's not again. It's more like PGA, where you're. I don't think you're gonna get like a four point projection edge, uh, like you can in NBA. Yeah. I I, I mean you. So your Mike Trout pro- projection is you know nine point eight instead off. of nine point four. Yeah. You know, like whatever. You're not. It's not gonna be a point or something. Two points different. Right. Uh, uh, maybe for some very small, tiny percentage of the users. But a sim will show that a lot of low owned guys are much better than they write. You'd think they would be any decent sim will tell you that. Yeah. And people didn't know that before, but now the more sim users they'll be, yeah. they'll be in their portfolio. And a lot of times all it takes is a couple points, just like dupes, just like dupes, very similar. Yeah. So yeah, if you got a do, if you got a lineup, you think it's going to dupe four times and it's actually 10 times. That's went from a good lineup to dog shit. Right. You know, 
and you got a and you got a a, a stack that you think is going to be one percent owned now four percent owned because of the Sims. That stack sucks now. You know, that, that, those might be a little extreme examples, but no, I, yeah, no, I, I 100%. that's kind of the that's kind of point. And so then we're all once it all becomes efficient, you know, yeah. And it's and again, it's not like NBA. I don't think, and maybe even N- no. NFL, you might be able to do that type of stuff too, but. I don't think you could do it in PGA and MLB. I got to say, I was surprised to hear uh, Yuta say on in Lowell's that the projections for MLB are bad. And I'm sure he has like a way of back testing that. I, I would assume that this is something like he's, he's probably accurate, but like I, I give zero thought to projections in MLB, except for like sometimes with pitchers, I will, I don't know, think about projections to, to adjust things a little bit or like on, on really short slates, but just like the correlation is just such a huge part of it for MLB that I just like, assume that it, that they're probably good enough um so that was that was really interesting to me to hear that MLB projections uh, he thinks are are bad worse than other sports I, so i've been talking to him offline quite a bit and um his he's going to he's going to try his his MLB projections and we're going to and we're going to find out like we're going to we're going to talk about whether he's going to continue to do it or not this year but he's going to start off with his with his projections uh yeah he 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 thinks like one of the sites isn't very good um cardi he's like ambivalent on kind of okay uh i think and i don't want to talk about you know private conversation stuff yeah yeah. no i get it um but yeah he he, uh uh i mean i'm skeptical even even though obviously it's you know one, one of the mount rushmore dfs players yeah of getting a huge projection edge yeah in mlb i i am also just because like the the projections are so like not there's not a huge disparity in the projections and like how much can you really be off on and i don't know but yeah whatever um uh all right i think that we've i think that i've asked you all of the questions that i really wanted to ask other than uh i've been i've been ending with the uh uh, favorite win or win celebration. So can you, can you give me one, uh, one example, uh, w- one win that is your favorite or win celebration? The, the only two is the first one I told you with the Chris Paul yeah. and, and Al was just by myself in the, in my house cheering fist pumping fist pumping. Yeah. That was my favorite one of all time. And then uh, a PGA, a PGA one. Uh, Cause I want a ton of money. Um, but I don't think I even, I was just, I was kind of more in shock, I guess. I don't know. Um, was this early on? No, hmm. no, no. I, I was, I, I must've played 20, 30,000 that day that, that, that PJ slate. So it must, couldn't have been early on. Um, those are, those are the two I remember. And my, the, my worst, one, one, one of my worst days early on was an NFL uh, NFL slate. This might have been before I even won that first tournament. So I was building up my role. And I bet I had like 5,000 on the slate in my, my role. This was back in the day, which was mainly cash games and stuff when you could do this. But my role was probably like 15,000. But it was it was, you know, cash game. Probably even played multiple cash lamps, so it's very unlikely I was going to lose. But anyways, I, for some reason, like an idiot, my 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 spreadsheet was so huge and slow and cumbersome. It took forever, and I like kept redoing projections based on news with never getting in lineups in. And two seconds left to get my lineups in, I didn't get my lineups in, and take took a bagel. Ooh. For a third of my role, uh, early on, early, early on, it might even be more than that. It was ridiculous. I was, you know, playing. It was, it, it, I, you know, I had a life role too, but like it was mainly my, and I, and I thought like that's that's it. I thought like that's it. I'm yeah, I'm done with this. Never gonna recover from that dumbass move. Uh, yeah, there was you another are. one early on. I, I won. I came from behind on a Sunday from like 1100th to win or something. Damn. And, and um, this is very early on. And my role was getting low again. 
to like keep me alive in in pga mm-hmm. nice so at one point there was there was edge in pga <laughs> <laughs> I, I think there. I think there's still an edge. It's just really hard to realize it. Yeah, he I think it's just, Yeah, yeah. You just need to play, you know, for a thousand years, and uh, yeah. you know, and then you'll 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 make your your twelve percent <laughs> after a thousand yeah. years, um, on the full slate one. So, I, I really, yeah, I think that's that's the big problem. Is it's just they're huge fields. It's PGA. You know the ball. You know where's the ball going to go? The weather, like tomorrow, like the weather's supposed to be crazy this week. Oh, right, really? Friday. So you got to play yeah. the the weather uh, phases, whatever. Like you play the morning waves, morning wave or afternoon wave. People say, right? Um, yeah, but like then the the problem with this week is they might get delayed. So if it gets oh, delayed, sure. then what wave do you play? Interesting. Throws everything off. Yeah. So huh. hadn't heard that. So yeah, what weather's definitely important, but just like the point of large field PGA DFS is a ton of variance. Yeah. So you could easily lose for a year or two and be like, I'm the worst PGA DFS player, and you might have like a small edge or something, you know. It's entirely possible. That's one of the one of the good things about these sims, these post lock sims, is it can kind of keep you sane by looking looking back and like, okay, I'm plus it says I'm plus ROI. Yeah. So that's not, I mean, I know it's clients right. bucks and doesn't pay I made back ball. 10% of yeah, yeah. But I'm 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 but according, um, to according to the Sims, I'm winning almost every single night. I should just eventually it'll happen. So it does keep you a little more sane in this crazy variance game, but um yeah. it's much better winning. <laughs> right. Actual money is more <laughs> Actual fun. Actual money's than, way than way bucks. better than Glancy bucks. Uh, NA uh, asks you, how much is the draft caddy? And I was going to ask you where people can find you. So we'll, we'll start with this one, though. How much is the draft caddy? He's interested 20 in bucks or 25 out. bucks a month. There's a two day free trial, too. So you could oh, check it out. So you, you just like want to check it out. Brick75.com. And that is brick without a K. B R I C. Yeah, B R I C 75. Just like my handle. Um, you have to, you know, make an account on Brick75, too, because that's the only way to activate it, anyways, is to. You know, to know that you paid for it with an email, yeah, with yeah. that email. So, and then twenty five uh, bucks, I think. Um, where can people find you? So uh, we got a uh, Brian Hooper at Brian Hooper underscore underscore on uh, on X, I guess is what we're calling it now. Um, I put the the link to your YouTube in chat somewhere. It is. Let's see if I can find it here. Unless you remember it, do you remember? Oh, uh, it's uh, at Brian Hooper seventy five. Yeah. On, youtube uh where else where else can people find you and I, i'll probably do a video on there like once every you know blue moon two three months uh and that's i think that's it right brick 75.com yeah brick 75.com that's, that's plenty uh, mainly twitter and uh, my dms are open yeah. so yeah if anyone needed to talk to me send, send me a dm I guess are you in any discords? Are you're in the? Are oh, in the I have discord. discord. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there's lols in the in the deposit kingdom. Discord. There's the deposit kingdom, which is Pete's that has a lols forum, and I have my own private one, um, Brick Seventy Five. The links on my oh, yeah, website. Yeah. The links on my website if you want to join that. It's open. Yeah. Um, where mainly that's where because uh, I do ownership projections for PGA and MMA, and they're free on the site too. And I usually just, you know, hey, projections are up. And here's the update for the draft caddy. Does anyone have any questions? And occasionally people have questions or we talk talk strategy sometimes. Nice. All right. So those are all the places that you can find Brian. Lots of you can find him on Discord, you can find him on Twitter. He's got the website if you want to check out his tools. Um, so go go check out all of Brian's stuff. Good stuff on brick75.com. Thank you to Brian Hooper, Brick75, for joining me on Playing for Keeps Episode 5. Thank you all for hanging out. I don't know if I'm going to do the same time next week. I, I was telling Brian I might change the time now that apparently everybody is doing playback, everybody in the entire industry, and there's PGA, so now there's a lot of, a lot of stuff going on on Wednesday night. So might change up the uh, time, but I will let you know ahead of time. You can also find these shows wherever you get your podcast. Uh, if you could, if you could uh, like the video, if you're on YouTube, subscribe to my YouTube channel. I'd really appreciate that. If you're on the podcast channel, please do subscribe there, rate and review. All that really helps me out quite a bit. Thank you all very much for hanging out and I will catch you next time.